Ay, ay, ay. I played that song last time and I liked it just as much this time. The chill vibes are in the studio tonight. Welcome. This is WBEZ Chicago. I'm Ira Glass. This is his niece, Kayla, aka Kia. Uh, I'm not that. <laughs> just in case you're wondering if that was real, it's not. Um, welcome. It's been a little while. I've been trying to wait for some juicy stuff to come up to uh, return to Hollisville coverage. And, uh, you know, this isn't super juicy, but it sort of, it, 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 it rises to the occasion of semi-juicy tea, <laughs> gossip, and or uh, information that may be interesting to people who closely follow the Hollisville saga that is Dave Hollis, Rachel Hollis, Kez Dark, which I will now be saying correctly from now on. I don't know his last name, pronunciation, but Kez, not says, and Heidi Powell. That is who I'm discussing today, in addition to uh, possibly some other gurus. We got Mel Robbins in the mix because she's involved. <laughs> And I just did a you know expose on Jay Shetty, and there was so much content that I did not get to. I would love to share some of that cringe along the way uh, as we go. But I know the big things, the big news of the day uh, is always going to go first and foremost to our girls, our girlies, <laughs> Rachel Hollis and Heidi Powell. Uh, Heidi, I got some Heidi uh, sound bites for us. I will reveal one now for your listening pleasure, um, and then we'll reveal some more as we go. So this one I like. They're going to be dropping some really powerful, amazing, life-changing shiz. <laughs> because today on the show, <laughs> I'm going to be dropping some amazing, life-changing, wonderful, whatever she says, shiz. <laughs> so <laughs> gear up. <laughs> Gear up, girlies! It's time to snark. Okay, so uh, welcome. I appreciate you being here for reals. Um, okay, so I uh, I've been on the I'm on the Reddit every day. Hollis Uncensored is my home. Um, so the big the big deal that's actually like ongoing as we speak, and hopefully uh, we'll be getting like some late breaking links sent over my way. Um, but uh, Heidi and Dave have been basically chaotically traveling the country in the last, I mean, for the last two years, really. But um, essentially <laughs> more chaotically than normal in the last few weeks or so. And um, Heidi famously doesn't have access to a videographer team even though she does most of the time. But famously, she doesn't have access whenever her and Dave seem like they're on the rocks. <laughs> whenever Dave and her seem like they're on the rocks, all of a sudden there's this like content that must be shot immediately. And oh my gosh, I cannot afford a, a professional videographer, even though every other shoot, she has one. Um, but for this time, she must go to Texas. She must fly to Austin, Texas to be in Dave's compound in Dripping Springs uh, to film such content. So we've been getting a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of Dave and Heidi couples content the last few days. And previous to that, we got, you know, two or three days of Dave being dad of the year. That was really, I think his PR move, uh, probably directions from his PR person, if he does have one, or he read a book about how to get yourself unstuck, untethered from the harbor um, from a PR professional. And they said, if you're selling a children's book and you're the main character of the children's book, you probably should try to portray yourself as father of the year. So we got a lot of like Dave smiling with the kids. Hey kids, come into the frame. Let's take a selfie. Let's take a selfie kids. Show everybody that I'm a good guy. Uh, so there's a lot of that. <laughs> and then the kids were gone. Don't know where they went. And then Heidi was in the picture again. And then Dave's now back in Arizona. So that's like the wrap up of what's going on with them, essentially. So we have some clips um, of, of that and just kind of can 
marvel at their life and you know a little proposal jokes a little bit of hee hee ha ha what are we we don't know uh, a little bit of oh we're having fights <laughs> and so i figured let's let's watch it um so so let's start off let's start off you guys let's start off okay here's heidi powell if you don't know who heidi powell is Heidi Powell is a fitness influencer. She was the star, or the co-star, really, of uh, Extreme Weight Loss, no, Extreme Makeover Weight Loss Edition. So uh, she was tasked, I'm going to put myself in Heidi's shoes. She was tasked with uh, helping people lose weight by screaming at them. <laughs> if you're young, um, you may not remember, but there was a period between like 2004 and 2000. 12, 13, where there was a large genre of entertainment on TV where um, trainers of various, uh, of various knowledge would go on TV and take people who were overweight and uh, yell at them into submission until they threw up and lost weight uh, within a six week period of a TV show. And then, um, you know, they'd be like, Oh, my life has changed. It's amazing. And then, you know, inevitably months later, years later, all the weight has been gained back because it is literally impossible to keep up that lifestyle of working out 17 hours a day and eating nothing. It's quite the, uh, memorial if you go back and I'm not going to say I did not watch them. I watched biggest loser. I watched, I thought Jillian Michaels was so awesome back in that time frame and that shows you where I was uh psychologically so that's kind of the show that she was on anyways hello everybody hello hello I see some some familiar faces in the audience out there in the audience out there um so let's see let's just 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 catch up with Heidi just see in real time as they say just see what she's up to Okay, so she's doing some workouts. I gotta say, that is like pretty muscular. I was shocked. That's like, whoa. And Heidi likes to work out in slides now, sandals. That's her new look. Okay, more of her son. She's also mother of the year. FaceTiming with the kids. We can skip. Okay, here's Dave sleeping on her shoulder. He's going back right before school starts. <laughs> he's making sure he's at home with Heidi's children. Uh, okay. Do you see these eyes? Look at these eyes and tell me that you're tired. Tell me that our flight was supposed to take off at 8.55 p.m. Didn't take off till, I said 1.20, but that was kind. Maybe it was like 1.30. 1.30. Luckily, we gained time in travel. Was it lucky? So then we got home. We ended up going to bed about 2.45 or 3 a.m. These, ba these bags will attest. Up at 5. <laughs> but we're not stopping. Let's go. Wait, did I say up at 5? Not up at 5. Up at 8. <laughs> that's a pretty accurate depiction of like at any given time, if you go on Heidi's page, like that's the type of content you can see. We're usually not a back lat workout. I will say usually we're, we're working out glutes on Heidi Powell's page. So I, I have to give it to her. She was mixing up the workout routine today. I'll give her props for that. Um, why is Dave there? Don't know. He likes to be around female empowerment gurus, which apparently Heidi now is one. Um, okay, so here's a, <laughs> here's a funny one. So Heidi doesn't know that you can edit videos, so she's like, "Oh, I'm blocking my here's 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 my body." <laughs> it kind of does look like it's my body. Okay, here's me doing squats. Um, Heidi doesn't know that you can edit out the beginning of the video where you're crouched down uh, in the shot, but you know she's learning. She does not. A, she's not a tech girl. And so she's going to show Dave, because Dave did... So actually, hold on. Before we watch this, we got to watch this first. So Dave decided, you know, they're fighting, basically. He's saying here in the, um, in the comment or in the description, it says, need to reset your mood during a long day? Flip on some music. Do 10 quick squats. Be silly while you do them. And high five a friend, or in this case, tag them once you're done. 
That Heidi had zero idea what was happening here as she prepped for our next shot made it even better. I dare you not to smile after moving your body and acting a fool for 24 seconds. Want to shake the funk? Tag a friend and challenge them to move with you as you tee up a great weekend. Happy Friday. So Dave's back. (laughs) Dave's back. uh, Back in his uh, normal habitat of making captions like this on Instagram. So basically he's like, okay, he's insinuating here that they're fighting. Or they're having, you know, a funky mood. She's texting. He's doing that. Okay, so that was posted first. Then this is this is the response. Heidi's like, yeah, well, those squats sucked. I'm going to literally leap into outer space. I'm going to blue origin myself, yeet out of this universe, <laughs> and show you uh, how many squats I can do better than you. Um, that was my impression. And I only say that because that's the type of person Heidi comes off to me as, is a very competitive person, even with her children. And I've compiled, I have not, I need to, I need to go and blur their faces because I do show sometimes, a lot of times I show the kids' faces, but for this one, because I'm specifically kind of gathering a bunch of footage where I'm sort of insinuating that, I'm not even insinuating, I'm saying that Heidi is competitive with her children and Heidi treats her children differently. And I only know this, I don't know this, I don't know this, but it only comes across that way based on the Instagram posts that she makes. And I've developed a theory of how she thinks of all her children. So I need to go back and blur them because I think that's sort of crossing the line for me ethically. Um, But when there are stuff like this on the page, I don't mind so much, but here's another great example. Oh, hold on. Uh, okay, another time where she's crouching in the camera. Okay, so her daughter does this little trick thing. So can't just let the daughter do it privately in her home. No, we must post this to the entire world, 500,000 subscriber or followers. And she has to also show how she can do it too. And this is reminiscent to me. We can get off of this now. Um, it's reminiscent to me of when her older daughter, Marley, did a backflip one time at the beach. And the next video is Heidi doing two backflips at the beach. So, you know, <laughs> there you go. Um, this is also something I find funny. If anyone's giving me life advice from the floor of their bedroom, I ain't taking it. That's just like a pretty good rule of thumb. If you're delivering advice and you don't own a chair, eh, I don't know. I just feel like there's probably someone better that has better advice. Okay, (laughs) so that's Heidi. Cool, 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 cool. Uh, Okay, so here's Dave. Now, Dave has not been on Instagram stories because he's been busy going live in the community, inside of, sorry, inside of the community. Um, where he, where he lives. I don't have any inside of clips. Dang. Well, we'll just have to imagine. Um, okay. So like I said, day was dad of the year. He was home for like a minute and he decided to. For the uncertain times ahead. (sighs) Okay, here we go. I'm just going to play it. Um, so Dave does this thing with his children. So Noah is probably the number one target because he's got the book with her coming out called Tea Time with Noah. It's been pushed back for like over a year, I think. Um, And it's supposed to come out in November. So Dave is back and and ready and starting to do these advertisements, like these organic posts with his children where he's promoting that he's a good dad, in my opinion. Um, so then he was home. He's been in Arizona. He's been traveling with Heidi quite a bit, in my opinion, in the last month or so. Um, he's been in Hawaii with her and her kids. Uh, he's been in Arizona with her kids and her, he's doesn't really show his kids much. And, but it's not that he doesn't show his kids because he's spending so much time with his kids. In my opinion, it looks like he's not there (laughs) to spend time with them. So he's, in other places. And the only reason I know he's in other places is because Heidi is always posting him and saying like, he's here, look at us. We're going to the movies. We're going here and there, blah, blah, blah. So he decides, okay, he's going, he's home for like a short period of time and he's going to put his kids right on the internet. You know, first things first, get the kids on the internet. 
Uh, yeah. And so instead of, you know, showing maybe uh, I'm against it all, but let's say he was going to show just like them running. Oh, me and my son going for a run. How sweet. No, no, no. That's too little. That's, that's too little of a commitment. We must turn our son into a child influencer. Self-help. Times ahead. While they run. It's going to be a little hard, but you're going to get through and it's going to be great. You're going to battle through it. But what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. So. Or we need a little uh, clean the house motivation. You got anything? Uh, well, clean your house because the house ain't going to clean itself. Ooh, those are wise words. The best part of camp. Uh, the dances. The I mean, there's, there's dances and I made a lot of friends. Did you dance with uh, anyone in particular or just uh, all your friends? All my friends. As it should be. Let's go. Dave does this to Ford specifically he's like so I've talked about this before but really in both Heidi and Dave's situation the older the kids get the less manipulatable they get it seems the older they get the less they want to be on camera the less they want to be part of the content because uh both of Dave and Rachel's older sons they're not really involved anymore they'll appear here and there in the background of something or They'll be in a picture or they're like, you know, hey, okay. Like they don't seem, they're not doing shows with dad. <laughs> they're not in vlogs too much with, with mom, uh, which makes sense because they're teenagers. But the younger ones, Ford is 10 or 11 now and Noah is five. They don't have as much choice. So <laughs> Dave does this thing with Ford where he's always insinuating that he's got a girlfriend oh is it a girl or oh did you dance with anyone in particular he's very very pushy in my opinion with making this narrative that Ford is a ladies man or Ford has a girlfriend or whatever and Rachel also has taken this narrative and puts it on her social media when she was talking on Valentine's Day or around Valentine's Day about how Ford gave this Valentine's Day card to a classmate and she didn't like it and she ripped it up and you know threw it away or whatever and Ford was like heartbroken over this and she's like it's the funniest thing in the world it's so funny my son is heartbroken <laughs> if you don't think it's funny then I don't know what to tell you like that's the thing so apparently that's just fine like because Ford is young you know, sending this out. She's got 1.5 million subscriber or followers on Instagram. Plus she's got her YouTube. He's got, you know, less than half a million, but close to it, like 400 something thousand, you know, just like continue that. And also he went on a, he went on a, like a play date or hung out with a friend from school. Ford did. Dave followed him around with the camera, docks the girl's house where like he was going to the door to ring the doorbell and then insinuated like, oh, it's a girl, right? It's a girl, but it's just your friend. Okay, whatever. It's just your friend. Okay, whatever. So again, this part is par for the course, basically. It's like just on brand to make Ford into this thing that he's 10 years old. I, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Anyways. More questions for Ford. Happy birthday, buddy. It was pretty good. Yeah? Uh, we got a giant water slide and all my friends. Yeah, and what you, your actual birthday was at camp, wasn't it? Yeah, I got my face smashed with a bunch of cake. Feels right. Feels right. Pit Stop, Feels favorite right. song. Harry Styles. That's not a song, that's a singer. Harry Styles. Anything by Harry Styles? Harry Styles. All right, we have our answer. Aggressive. Advice for her son going into kindergarten. Again, oh, no, don't worry I don't know. about it. Have fun. Okay, let's use that frame. Um, one of the arguments that Rachel made when she posted a half nude photo, I mean, that's what it is, a half nude photo of her daughter uh, online recently and then stuck behind it and said, it's everyone's dirty mind that's the problem. The picture itself was not the problem. Um, you know, and she said, what if a boy what if a boy of her age had no top on? Like, that would be fine. I just find it inappropriate to put your children at all without clothes on, and really with clothes on, on the internet. Because again, they aren't, they don't, they cannot give their consent. And the fact that y they're being blasted on the internet constantly, more so on Dave's than Rachel's, but even when Rachel does share something highly inappropriate, it just bothers me to no end. And I, I you know, 
I realize my role in this too is that I'm also perpetuating them being exposed, but I feel like, I don't know. I feel like I'm trying to bring attention to say like, stop supporting this shit on the internet. (laughs) But I mean, maybe that's, maybe everyone that's here probably would agree with that for the most part. And so your mind's already made up. The people who are in the comments are like, this is amazing. We need more of this. We need more of this, Um, which there is quite a lot of it. Um, You know, oh, we need, let's go. We need more of this young CEO in training. Like, let the kid be a kid. He's on summer vacation. Young CEO in training. It's frustrating. The kid's so stupid. Oh, and they're commenting on his hair and whatever. Anyways. So that's what Dave does with his free time. <laughs> uh, so fun. Okay. And we're going to get back to them in a moment because we're going to talk about the mastermind. It's like $5,000 to attend <laughs> to hear Dave Hollis speak. Uh, I hear that on in my nightmares for free. Uh, okay, and then let's go to Rachie. So our girl Rachie, she hit 100 million downloads. Now, I believe that. I do believe it. Um, you know, I think with Apple, at least, it automatically downloads a lot of times. Like, I, there's stuff I haven't listened to in months, and I found out later. I was like, I had no storage on my phone. I was like, why do I not have storage? I've, like, deleted every photo I've ever taken. And it was like, was podcasts because they just auto download. So I do think there is that in play. Now, I think her podcast was very popular back in the day. Do I think it's as popular now? I cannot imagine. I cannot imagine, but maybe, I don't know. She seems like that's the thing that's like keeping her alive, you know, Uh, not physically, but like financially and career wise, because she has ads. So, and you know, she can sell against the numbers, um, whether they convert or not, who's to say, but, um, it's not translating into ticket sales that we know for sure. So a hundred million downloads does not mean a hundred million tickets sold. It means like a thousand, not, I don't think even a thousand, I think maybe 500. I don't even know. Uh, it might be a high, a high estimate, but we're going to look at that in a second, but it is interesting. Um, you know, big milestone among, the cancellation. I think she gets a lot of hate listens. I listen to like every podcast, so I'm also part of the problem. Um, but recently, and, and I think my plan is to listen to the one, not the most recent one. There's been a couple where she's literally not even introduced the, the person she's talking to in the podcast. It's just like, you got to figure out who it is throughout the interview, or you can read the thing but if like there are people who aren't it's not like Madonna like okay if you talk to Madonna you don't really think Madonna is a singer and she was very popular back in the 80s and continues to be popular now like you know she's talking to people who aren't that well known so I don't know if it's like she's forgotten to record an intro or she's like not giving a shit anymore not sure Um, but there's one where she goes back to basics and I think this is her last ditch effort to sell tickets. I mean, she's got some time to sell the tickets, sort of, but um, she's trying to appeal to the people who used to like old Rachel, who don't really understand new Rachel, but are hoping that like, okay, we're going to get some clarity. And I want to sort of revisit the Rach Talk that it, the Rach Talk Live as it was sold in the beginning and now what it's being sold as because it's a different story than when it launched. It was supposed to be a laid back, chill, funny, hilarious thing, not at all like Rise. And now it's, which I think makes more sense to have it a little, be more specific, at least of what it's going to be about, what it entails. Now there's more details, but it totally does not relate to what it still first was announced as. Anyways. Um, okay. So she's like so excited. She's, you know, uh, imperfect evolution. I'll just read it. The podcast crossed 100 million downloads this week. This show, this work, this life is an imperfect evolution. As I've grown and changed, so have the guests, the conversations, and the focus, but the core value, the greatest belief I have remains the same. With the right information, anyone can change their life for the better. Change doesn't happen at once. It's a thousand small ideas, insights, and decisions that add up to really big things. My intention is to keep creating a show where we can all learn from brilliant guests who share the exact small idea we needed to hear on the exact day we need to hear it. Thank you all for joining me on my journey. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Um, all right, here's here's a photo of Kez 
and Rachel. There was quite the debate on the Reddit channel about this, the Reddit thread, like whether this was cute or not. I say, <laughs> not cute. I don't know. I'm a hater, obviously. Boo thing. My boyfriend. It just seems like so, like, I, I get it. I get it. Like, you're showing, like, how in love you are. Like, we're hugging. We're just, like, we're just emphatically in love with each other. Like, I've never felt this well. I'm so free. Dave is such an asshole. Like, that's what this photo is saying to me. Like, I'm just so happy now that I've got that weight off of me. And I'm sure she does have weight off of her, like, from Dave being a jerk. But this, I mean, also, she's like, I'm never going to make the mistake again to share my relationships online. That was such a mistake. I hate Instagram. Social media is the worst. It's so toxic. I hate it. I wish I didn't have to do it. I hate social media. I've never liked it. Everyone's mean to me. Everyone hurts me. I just can't stand another second of it. And then post a photo like this. It's like, <laughs> we get what you're trying to prove. And it's also like, sl she's like slowly dripping out the relationship. Like she talked about him incessantly in the beginning, but it was very vague. Who was it? Who was it? Who was it? Boo thing, boo thing. Now it's like my boyfriend's in the entertainment. So she's like, so, but that's what she did with Dave. If you, if you were a fan and I wasn't, but I sort of followed the, the trend in the beginning, Rachel didn't talk much about Dave. Dave was there in the background. He was the executive. She would talk about him a little bit here and there. Like, oh, my husband is works for Disney. Okay, whatever, who cares? And then slowly, 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 over time, all of a sudden, he's in the content. All of a sudden, he's doing, you know, interviews. All of a sudden, like, now he's at Rise. All of a sudden, he's do doing speeches. I feel like that's what she's hoping here happens, personally. That's what I think. I think she's hoping that... This guy gets more comfortable with it. She she had him in like a vlog, you know, from the neck down. Uh, she's basically, her big thing is like talking about him in story form, you know, like telling stories with him in it. She mentions him literally probably in every podcast. So the fact that her saying that she's never going to share a relationship, no, that went out the window and she's like, I kissed a boy again. I kissed a man for the first time. <laughs> Um, and then it's just gotten more and more, you know, sharing basically since then. So, you know, he's, he's, the first time he showed up in a photo was cryptically in the uh, picture or which one? Let's see. And if I scroll down too far, you're going to start seeing Dave again. <laughs> so I don't want to sc scroll down too far. Uh, okay. Cause she doesn't post as much as she used to. She's post every day. Okay. Wait, there was another one. Where's, oh, here it is. So July of last year. So a year ago, he showed up for the first time. So it's like I said, the slow drip of making him an Instagram boyfriend. Uh, then again, from the back, you know, just like, oh, nothing to see here. Nothing to see here. Then he's on the second page here, full face, but no, no tagging. Then again, second or no, first page, but on the side. So the cropped version, he's not in it. I don't know. I, I feel like a lot of thought goes into her, you know, planning, social media planning. She acts like it has nothing. And then this one, she tagged him finally, confirming uh, who it was. And then here we go. So it's been, a, it's been a two years. Anyways, so Kez and her are still together. I had speculated that they might have broken up or had some fight. She has talked about them having disagreements, that she was frustrated with him um, in the podcast she did with the energy healer, um, energy healer, Kimberly. She said, I was very frustrated with my partner last night and I had an earache because that was because I wasn't being heard. <laughs> so, you know, okay. Uh, so let's take a look. Oh, wait, and then, wait, okay, so Kez. Now, if you're familiar with Kez's story, um, he is Sean Mendez's tour manager. Sean Mendez has canceled his tour because of mental health concerns or wanting to work on his mental health. So that's awesome. That's really cool of him to cancel it for that reason and being honest about that. Um, but I guess Kez now has free time because um, he was like, I'm on the road again six weeks ago. And then it got canceled along the way. Uh, and this is in June. And he's limited the comments on like all of his posts, which is interesting. Prob probably because of Sean Mendes stuff, because people are upset maybe that he's not performing, but um, those are his posts. And then now he's like, go touch grass. 
It says, being outside calms me, even for a few moments. Noticing the light play off whatever surrounds me. The meeting of green and blue and gold. Maybe try it today. It's nice. I guess he's a poet, according to Rachel, because he sends her poems about her hair. Uh, yeah, so here's some grass. Go touch it, says Kez. Cool. All right, um, let's look up Rage Talk. Let's look up Rage Talk. And if you go on rachelhollis.com, miss, miss rachelhollis.com, my favorite website to visit, um, this is what it looks like. So this is the homepage. So nothing else has been updated in a long ass time. Like if you, this is old stuff, like five ways to style a graphic tee has been there for like years, <laughs> years. Yes. Yes. Consciously Kila. Am I the only hippie? She is. Um, okay. So, but they have updated this at least, uh, you can still get your ticket to rate shock. Here's what the website looks like. <laughs> looks very familiar. It's something that I have behind me. Um, okay. So all of the dates are still there. It looks like. Now, the one I'm going to pick today is Charleston, South Carolina, because I think from the ones that I can see the layout of, because some of them at the bottom, they're, you can't, like, I believe Wichita, like, you, it's a different, like, it's sort of like this, like, the website's a little different, so you can't, um, like, see what is available, which probably is a good thing for her, because the other ones aren't very good, but she's been to Charleston before, she's had a rise I guess, in Charleston before. So she's like, we're going back to Charleston. Um, so you would think that some people that saw her probably liked her, you know, would do that again. But it looks like that's like her worst performing but from what I can see. And this is October 2nd at 7. Yeah, all the blue, once again, is uh, available. Yeah, so, you know, ain't looking good in Charleston. And I think maybe this one, I don't know. I mean, I, I can't count, but like one, two, three, four, eight, ten. Okay, so like let's say that's a section of 10 here, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. Let's say 150. Uh, you know, they could all move up and be there. It's just going to be more intimate, smaller uh, than this, you know, really is, uh, theater is worth. And I guess like go big or go home. She went big, but everyone's staying home. <laughs> uh, sort of the vibe that I'm getting. Uh, let's look at Birmingham. This is the most recent one coming up, September 30th. So the balcony is still open. Now, it looks like one of the venues, and I'll show it in a second, the balcony closed. It looks like they closed the balcony. Unless they sold out the seats, which I don't think happened because why would that makes no sense. Um, but you know, they got, uh, she's got a section here that's sold, you know, not super great. Like, I feel like you're going to, like, she could have a full on conversation with all these people, perhaps. I, I don't know if that's going to happen, but, uh, yeah, we'll see. Um, what's the one with the, I think it was Indianapolis, I believe. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, see, this, it's all shut down. So I think they either moved the people who bought tickets, if anyone did, in these sections, on the above section, and moved them down here to this back row or something. But there is a good amount of people who are going here. This is more than I would probably say any other that I can see um, has sold, like any other city. Uh, so, it, you know, that will be an intimate space, but it looks like, you know, maybe 200 people, perhaps. That's not bad. I guess, I mean, it's bad. It's bad. It's horrible. If you try, if you're hoping to sell these out, like that's not good. But I mean, compared to the rest, you know, and she said one time Detroit was like killing the game, selling tickets. Uh, and now you can't even see it. <laughs> this is what it, you can buy Rachel's NFT. <laughs> No, I'm just kidding. Uh, you can't see it. So I, I think you can still buy tickets because here's the side. You know, I can still purchase, but um, I, it's not letting you see what other people have purchased. So I wonder if they, like, called and said, hey, can you, like, uh, not let people see that no one's bought tickets? Um, but I want to show you the email that she sent out. She sends out an email every Sunday. It's what she calls her, like, become my BFF. <laughs> Become my friend, because she, she, her and Heidi, 
and Dave, sell friendships. Okay, and there's two, so there's two different, let me go to my email, hold on. There's two different emails. She, so she's, people have been speculating that she's not even promoting this at all. So she did a 10 minute hard sell on her podcast where she talked about the one that we're going to listen to. She talked about um, how, uh, or she, she was talking about motivation. Like she was going very back to like circa 2018, Rachel Hollis, like you can do it. You're a warrior girl. You're a warrior woman, mama. Um, you know, that, <laughs> that podcast that I found to be very jarring in comparison to like, yeah, um, you know, every illness is made up and it's just in your head and I don't give my kids medicine anymore. <laughs> it's very jarring to go back to Rachel Hollis 2017. Um, but she does a hard sell and she's like promoting it, talking about what it's going to be like. Um, and then she sent out two emails about, uh, you know, coming to the the, the conference, or no, coming to tour, coming to tour, that's what she says now, come to tour, um, she doesn't say come to my tour, come to the tour, no, tour, anyways, okay, so, uh, here's one of them, here's the most recent one, uh, okay, uh, let's zoom in, Okay, it says, a note from Rach. So she sends these out every Sunday. Usually it's like a promo of like her podcast. Sometimes she shows like, I use this face, face wash, whatever. It's a crapshoot out there. Okay, it says, anyone else out there love a goal? Me too. And not only do I love a goal, I love any and all details on how to better achieve goals, how to make the process feel good while I'm after them, and how to be all around more, be more efficient. Basically, I'm here for all the advice. She's here for all the things. Uh, but sometimes, sometimes, I just want something, someone to tell me that I've got this. I want to hear that motivational speech. Oh my God, I can't stop talk. I'm sorry. I want to hear that motivational speech from Denzel Washington or watch The Rock do a workout while listening to a voiceover of how he got cut from the NFL but still kept trying. I live for a YouTube of Oprah or Shonda Rhimes or Brene Brown telling us something that gives us courage and makes us want to keep going. So that's what this is. I made a full podcast, blah, 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 blah. And then here's her Rachel Hollis sign, which is now Heidi Powell signed as well. Uh, Rachel Hollis, let's reconnect live tour. Okay. All the cities again, this is what they're going to be talking about. We're talking about it all, how to reconnect with your vision and reignite your passion, how to raise your vibration. I hate that terminology. Personally, we're not vibrators. We are human beings. We do not vibrate on different frequencies. That to me saying that like, oh, you're low vibe. You're, I only hang out with people that vibe on my frequency. It's a way to say that you're better than everyone else, but not bringing like race into it, not bringing class into it. Just saying that you're spiritually above everybody. That's what that means. Because you went to a retreat that cost $5,000 and they told you that you're better than everyone. <laughs> So that's what I think of when I hear that as I like rip these and a half mad. Uh, okay. How to raise your vibration and attract more joy. So now we're attracting joy. We're not choosing joy. We're attracting joy, different, but the same. And abundance. How to create and elevate your circle of influence to positively change your life. Okay, once again, just what I said, you're better than everyone else. So you have to get into the circle where everyone else is better than you or you are just the same. So people who are going to like, you want to be a millionaire, find 20 millionaires to hang out with. Easy peasy, baby. That's how, that's how everyone does it. Um, you just walk into a room and go, are you a millionaire? Can I hang out with you? And they say, yeah. And then now you profit. Um, okay. How to cultivate confidence to build the life or business of your dreams. Okay, <laughs> we're going to play the video, just a quick recap of what this was originally sold as. So if you bought tickets in the pre-sale, which she was hoping like, oh, the pre-sale is going to be amazing. You get a special thing if you get the pre-sale. Um, like this is not what they signed up for. <laughs> okay, uh, how to become a better leader human by loving yourself and giving that love to others. I thought this was a comedy show. <laughs> this is supposed to be a lighthearted, fun comedy show. 
but apparently not. Okay, let me read the other one just to get you even more details. And then she really sold this weirdly, I thought, because the tickets had already been on sale for like weeks. And it's like a note from Rage, big news. Next month, the team and I are packing our bags and hitting the road. And the subject was my most exciting new project in years. And this is, yeah, July 31st. So the tickets had already been in sale since June 12th. So I was like, oh, she's got a new project? No, this is an old project that they haven't sold tickets for. <laughs> Next month, the team and I are packing our bags and hitting the road. We're bringing the motivation, inspiration, connection, and community that we've built up over the last five years, producing personal development conferences to 11 different cities. So now it is a personal development conference. So let me answer the questions. We keep hearing about this exciting project of ours. Are you going to be, are you going to add more cities? Are you going to come to fill in the blank so I can see you in my town? Why are you doing a tour instead of a conference? I'll answer the last one first because it's way more exciting. Our team has produced the Rise Conference since 2017. And in that time, over 100,000 people have attended first in person and later during the pandemic virtually. And I'm so freaking proud of that work. After the event, we hear the most incredible story. Okay, blah, blah, blah. I don't really care. But the numbers of our community, okay. But for the members of our community who haven't been able to join us, I've heard one bit of feedback again and again. The price of attending a conference for three days, the time off work, the airfare, childcare, travel, hotel room, and the event ticket mean that lots of people who want to want to come simply can't. So if you can't come to us, well, we're bringing the event, bringing the event to you was my solution. With a tour, why don't you just do it virtually? Like, if you, re I mean, I guess, like, the experience of in-person is different. Um, but you really, she did a virtual conference before, and it did very well uh, monetarily, financially. Um, so I'm not buying it. <laughs> like, you know, she's like, I'm trying to help the poor. It's like, okay, Rachel. <laughs> Whatever. Okay. With a tour, we're able to come. I, I, okay, this is my. This is what I'm, I, I think. Her boo thing, her boyfriend, Kez Dark, is a tour manager. So she wants to do what he does because she also has a competition issue. She has a competitive thing where Dave, you know, Dave ran a marathon, so she's going to run a marathon. She's talked about it in her book. She's talked about it in podcasts that when she was pregnant with one of her kids, Dave decided, like, I'm going to take up running and get a coach and do a half marathon. And she was beyond pissed and was mad at him and said, how dare you do this while I'm pregnant and I can't do this too. So as soon as she gave birth, like the next day she called the guy and was like, hey, I want to do a half marathon too. Okay, so that's the type of person Rachel portrays herself as. Um, so it makes sense that now her boo thing is a tour manager, goes on tour. She now wants to go on tour. She... I don't know if this is like a trait that's only in Hollisville. I don't think so. But it's like a competitive nature within your relationships. You must be winning against, you have to have the best couple because they, you know, Rachel's big on to, oh, we had an exceptional marriage. We didn't just have an average marriage. We had an exceptional marriage. Okay. So that's one part. And then not only are you competing with other people, other couples that you have a better relationship than them, you also compete within the couple to who's the better person and who's more driven, who's more, you know, better at running, whatever. That's what I think. So that's why I think she forced herself to do this tour because it would be a lot easier to do a virtual tour, a lot, 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 lot easier, cheaper, and probably more financially uh, successful but it would not prove that she can do what he can do. And it's not even his tour. That's the thing. Like he's with Sean Mendes. So I don't even really get it. But like, I don't know. That was my, that was my uh, theory. Okay. So she's talking about, you know, with the two, with a tour, we're able to come to individual cities, places that might not normally have opportunities for personal development or a safe space to speak honestly about your struggles and the greatest dreams in your heart. Okay. Every personal development tour goes to Ohio. <laughs> I'm just saying she got two locations in Ohio, Columbus and Cincinnati, I believe. Uh, yeah, Cincinnati and Columbus. There's a lot of personal development. Lewis House has his event there or is having his event there at least. Uh, in September, I believe. That's coming up soon. 
Um, okay. My events have always attracted every kind of person. They're a mix of ages, backgrounds, beliefs, and goals. We all have one major thing in common. We want life to get better. Sometimes people come because they feel stuck or lost. Sometimes people come because while they're walking their path, they still feel unsure of what to do next or where to move or purpose, blah, blah, blah. Okay. I don't care. It's so boring. It's so boring. It's not word salad as much as Dave. Like I can't, I can't even comprehend what he's saying. I'm just bored. Like I already know the grift, purpose, belonging, community. You ticket buy now nine nine seven for you. I love you. That's all it's saying. I don't need all the you know prepositions in between really. So what can you expect? out of each tour stop reconnection my intention for our time together is twofold first i want us to reconnect to our vision and tap into a passion and excitement for our unique purpose in this world that was lost for so many of us during the pandemic but i know it's still in you that fire deserves to burn brightly secondly i want us to reconnect with each other now more than ever we need strong circles of people who will be our hype squad and our accountability buddies this evening gives us the opportunity to reconnect in a powerful way Okay, so then here's the same thing again. The We're talking about reconnecting, raising your vibe, being a vibrator, cultivating cults, <laughs> cultivating confidence. Uh, okay, they do not plan to add any more cities. She said originally that they did hope to add some more if ticket sales were awesome. They are abysmal, so therefore they're not adding more cities. Um, okay, these are the only places, so hope that you can join us. So if, you know, if you're in Texas, you better fly to Ohio, I guess. Um, yeah, so it's like, okay, if you want to go to Raw, so this is, this is the part that kind of stuck out to me. If this sounds like something that you'd love to be a part of for the first time, or if you've been to Rise before and you want to have your spark reignited, I look forward to creating community with you in person soon. So let's go back to the YouTube video. Uh, because she originally said, if you've been to Rise, this is nothing like Rise. This is so different. So funny, more funnier, <laughs> much more funnier than that. Okay. And this came out, Pretend. we don't have to listen to the whole thing, but this came out. Hey guys, welcome to Rachel. May 23rd, if you can believe it. Wow. We've really been following this for quite a while. <laughs> it never ends. Okay. So this is how she... My she did use Rise footage. Now, that was the confusing part because it was like, how can you say that it's not like Rise, but then use Rise footage? But apparently it was actually a good thing that they did that because now they can be like, look, it was like Rise the whole time. So here we go. Weekly show where I... Let me skip this. We're Guys, I got some big news. We're going on tour. <laughs> Not, I don't want to yell. I don't want to alarm Jeff. We're going on tour, Jeffrey. Jeff, we're going on tour. Okay, gotta skip over this. I don't care about Jeff. I mean, I do care about Jeffrey. <laughs> I do care about Jeffrey. They don't care about Jeffrey. And I've already talked about Jeffrey at length. So I'm skipping Jeffrey, not the dog who lives in my heart. I'll adopt him if you don't want him anymore, Rachel and Dave. But um, for the, these purposes, we're going to skip over the Jeffrey section. <laughs> want a treat? Tour. And get your hearts ready because this is so let me explain what ready. is coming and what is happening and get your hearts ready because this is so amazing. Um, for since 2017 as a company, we have been producing events. We've been producing conferences for business, for women, for couples, for all sorts of things over the years. And when I looked out into the landscape of what comes next for us, I felt really confident about two things that were very important to me. The first was that I really wanted to go to you. So with the conference, uh, we pick a city and then people fly in from all over the world, all over the US and all over the world to attend. And that's amazing. And it's so freaking powerful to have people from so many different places in one spot. But it really limits so many people who want to attend because they don't have childcare or they can't afford travel or it feels too mm -hmm. daunting. And so the first intention I had with this tour was that we would come to you. We would bring the fun and the joy and inspiration and maybe the motivation and all of the great stuff that happens at one of our conferences, but we would do it in one night.
right? So instead of it being a three-day full conference commitment, it's one evening with your girlfriends, with your sister, with your fella if he's into talking about girl stuff too, but it is going to be so fun and we are coming to you. The second thing that I love about this iteration of our shows is... Okay, so that was like fairly on point. So she said the same thing, like, okay, three days is a lot of money. It's cheaper this way. We'll come to you one night instead of three. However, I would say that one night for $250 just to take a picture with her is high, in my opinion, with one drink ticket. That seems a little outrageous still, but it is better than thousands of dollars or... You know, I think, well, my virtual ticket <clears throat> was to go to Rise, the last one, the most recent one in Austin, was 250 for three days. Still a little outrageous in my opinion, but, you know, okay. And But this one, you can buy tickets for like $40. That seems to be like, I think, the level of the cheapest. And they do differ depending on which um, theater she's in. Is that it's way more affordable. So if we produce a three-day conference, it's massive and it's, I mean, it literally costs millions of dollars. But by doing a tour in different cities, we can make it smaller and because it's smaller, we can make it way more cost effective. So this September and October, I am coming to 10 different cities in the US and I'll be announcing cities soon, so get ready. But I wanted you guys to be the first to know that Rach Talk is going on the road. And again, like, okay, so Rach Talk has been her sort of, I talk about whatever I want. It's not Rise. It's sort of the antithesis of Rise. Like Rise is supposed to be like very focused and like you do your thing. And, you know, we cry at this time. We do our little sessions at this time. And this, this was, this was her way to like, just talk about whatever, loosey goosey, baby. So that's what they took on the road, but now they're not even really even talking about Rachel Talk Live. It's just Rachel Hollis tour. Because probably no one knows what Rachel Talk is unless you're snarking on it, to be honest. And if you're wondering what could possibly happen at an in-person event that you aren't already experiencing in this video magic, um, let, let's just show you some things. Okay, this is Rise footage. Anything else about, this is a tease. I can't even give you all of the information yet. I am only allowed to just tell you that I'm coming to you and that it's multiple cities and that we will be announcing all of those on June. June. On June 13th. We are announcing all the juicy They're details, everything that you need. Tickets went on sale. All our venues. So when we do a conference, that arena can hold 8,000. When we do this, that theater can hold 1,500. So because tickets are way less expensive and because there are less seats, I am telling you way in advance so you know. Like if I'm coming to your city, if I'm rolling into Omaha, if I'm rolling into Charleston, if I'm rolling into Birmingham, what up Alabama? Hypothetically, Bama, if I was about to come to you, hypothetically, you would wanna be ready in advance. So the dates you need to know. So 1500 tickets was like the low, like this is intimate, 1500. She's gonna be lucky if she's got 100 people per city. June 13th. I don't know how it works. I don't know. I don't never ran an event. I've never had to buy out a venue or rent a venue for the night. I'm assuming she's losing money. All the cities are announced. You get let's get let's be clear. Pre-sale is for people who are on my email. Okay. I was that tickets on my email. Let what she talks about. But if you're on that list, you get I'm gonna try it one more time. Unless what's the act? Write a little letter. Hey girl. We're not this on be there too. Sure. There. Who's gonna be there? Oh. They do it. It's very live. Talking about her clothes. We're going on tour. Okay. <laughs> oh, do you have any questions about tour, Jack? Anything I can answer for you that you're wondering? What can we expect? Will Jack be there? Yeah, he will. How long is the event? Great question. I think two hours. I think because there's an intermission. Oh, I didn't even say this. Possibly the most important detail. There's drinks. 
I mean, not- also now that it's like a mini rise in your own city, should we be drinking? <laughs> should we be blacked out while we plan our dreams and vibrate higher than ever before and cultivate our humanness and what other else did we do? Are we supposed to be doing? Should you be drinking during that? <laughs> Maybe that's a bad idea. No, I'm not giving them to you. You there's a lobby and because it's a theater, then in the lobby they have like cocktails. We never had a rise conference where you could go out to the lobby and get yourself a little chablis. We're going on tour. And if you're like, oh, like a rock star, Rachel, like a rock star, like um uh my boyfriend's going on tour this summer and uh there it is. I brought this up before, but it's like my boyfriend's going on tour. This has nothing to do with my obsession of going on tour. Not at all. Here we are. Uh, they're in like fancy tour buses. Are we, are you guys, oh, are, oh Rachel, Jack, are, are, are you guys going on fancy? No, we're going in SUVs. <laughs> it's fine, guys. It's, it's super. Cool. And you know, the vision is just like, okay, here it is. You grab your, the vision. So I see people are like, didn't we watch this already? Yes. I, it's changed. Rage Talk Live concept has changed. We're watching the original because I just read the new version of like what it's supposed to be. And it's very much like, a personal development conference. Now, this is what the original pitch was for this. This is what I want to re, uh, re-listen to. Sister, you grab your mama, you grab your girlfriends, or like I said, you grab, if you're with a dude and he likes to laugh and he likes joy and also is okay with maybe hearing jokes about my uterus, bring him too. My uterus. Are we gonna dance? Yes. Are we gonna laugh? exclusively are we gonna learn something yes but not in like a hard way this isn't journaling we're not we're just it's joy it's friendship it's connection it's love it's thinking it's beauty it's this it's butterflies it's rainbows it's coming to you did i mention that it's coming to you how i envision it jack is that it's like one part the sort of free flowing what's happening talking to the audience talking to people live in the moment and then other parts are keynotes that i've previously written do i have like a monologue maybe i don't i actually don't know like i haven't like finalized what i'm pulling on stage but it will be slightly different in every city but i don't know that i think you need to follow me but but you should okay so then she's like if people are so obsessed with me they want to follow me from city to city like do it and wear a t-shirt with my name on it. Okay, so basically, yeah, she's really, you know, leaned in, as uh, Cheryl Sandberg would say, she's leaned into the personal development aspect because people don't want to go see Rachel anymore. They don't want to be friends with Rachel anymore. Um, you know, I think we've seen that with Heidi and her mastermind, which we will talk about right now. Um, you know, they're selling friendships or Heidi is selling a friendship. Get close to me for $5,000. Get a hug from me in my, in the home where I used to spend time with my ex-husband um, for $5,000. And also hear Mel Robbins countdown from five. That's what Heidi's promising. And Rachel's promising, you know, get to see me on a stage for $40. It's, it's a long road to go down. Anyways, okay, so the reason why probably most of you are here is to talk about the new Heidi Mastermind. So we're going to go to uh, Reddit for this because a lot of this material is sort of like brand new. <laughs> brand new, baby, and it's not available everywhere. So here, um, and all of this has been posted on Reddit. I have not been able to verify the accuracy of said information. Now, I'll just say that. For legal purposes, this could all be someone creating this and posting this on Reddit for the sheer fun of it. It could be all fake. Do I believe that? No, I do not. Um, I do believe that this is legitimate and that this is accurate because it tracks and why, I don't know. I, just, I think it's real. But, you know, it can always be a, a hacker, a hater, a troll making all of this up. Um, but we just had t like literally two masterminds within the year from Heidi. We had the show up summit sus, which was back when God, like not that long ago, that was April. Then she had another mastermind mastermind at her ex-husband and hers home. If you remember that, um, in, in Chandler, Arizona, where she had maybe 40, 30, 40 people come, uh, all women. 
so it seemed, come to her old house that they rented and have tacos and listen to Dave and her talk about their souls and had s'mores. And they did not sleep there, apparently. Um, some people were assuming that they slept at the house. It, no, they just had the mastermind there. And then everyone had to have a hotel or have a house to stay in. <laughs> and that was 16 hours. Anyway, so that's not enough for you. If that was not enough, there's more. You can do another mastermind. Now, I don't know what the date of this one is, but it's coming soon, I would assume, probably at the end of this next round, which starts, so it's 60-day challenge, starts in September. So 60 days out from then, this will be there. And this is, in addition, this price, I believe, from my understanding, which I understand not much in life, is in addition to, or you buy this, this, like the extra, so there's like, okay, so let me start. There's like a price for the, to do the challenge, to get the workouts that Heidi does, to get yourself into the Facebook group where all the magic happens, where all the healing happens, where all Dave's coaching happens privately in this Facebook group, right? You pay 200 and something dollars, well, at least in the past, you can join that and become a member. But then there's this secondary thing where now you can, if you want to really dig deep, you want to go in person and meet them and be a part of the cult, I mean, community, um, then you can pay $4,997 doll hairs. Oh yeah, how can I forget? JB, thank you so much. Um, they also did yoga or breath work or a combination in the garage in said Arizona Airbnb that she used to live with her husband in and children um and brought up like 15 times that he used to live there with her weird uh i don't know if there was air conditioning i hope to god there was there was actually also a car in there so cramped space to say the least uh very weird very weird a lot of people were like looks like i don't know they talked about like oh we we healed souls here so who knows what was going on i don't know um, but okay, so here's the new mastermind. So, it, and the price of that mastermind was, I believe, the same or four thousand dollars, like f like three nine nine seven. I don't know for sure. I think they pulled the prices down, so I'd have to go back and look. But it was around the same price. This might be a little more or the same. Um, so okay, this is a Heidi Powell's mastermind. Now it's not Dave and Heidi's. It's just Heidi's. So I don't know why Dave is like acting like he's also the leader of this because he's not even in the, the second frame. Drew Manning is closer to Heidi than Davis in this photo, but okay. Uh, join today for 4000 so $5,000. Let's just like, there's $3 less than $5,000. Let's be honest. Uh, you get a weekly one-hour masterclass Zoom call with Heidi. Do you think it'll be on time? Probably not. Uh, includes a lineup of special guest speakers and experts every other week. So six, 60 days. How many month? How many weeks is that? I don't know. That's like two months. So every other. So if you get four of them, it'd be eight weeks, right? So every other week would be four. Okay, so you get four guests, and then her the other times. Okay. Uh, you get an invitation to our live in person one day mastermind gathering to get group coaching from Heidi and her team and new mastermind journals. So the show up summit was two days, I believe it was multiple days. Yeah. Well, if you were VIP, it was like three days or two and a half days. And if you were regular, it was two days. That's pretty typical for like masterminds. The ones that I've worked on, on the video production side have been multiple days and around the same price. So the fact that it's one day, that's asking a lot for that amount of money. Um, okay, so so Dave Hollis, uh, if you don't know who that is, that's Heidi's best friend. <laughs> and former, you know, wife, or sorry, former husband of Rachel Hollis, who was, you know, who's got tour woes of her own. Uh, Drew Manning, he's the guy, he was at SUS. Um, he, he's from fit to fat to fit where he was on a show at one point where he, another TV show where he would gain weight, gain the amount of weight that the, his client would have to lose. So for example, he'd work with a client who wanted to lose 50 pounds. So on the show, he would gain 50 pounds 
and then lose it with the person on the show to prove that he can, like, that he was with them in the trenches. Interesting concept. That's all I'll say. Uh, Mel Robbins. I'm not a fan of hers. A lot of people on Reddit were like, she's not so bad. I can't believe she's doing this with them. I'm like, I'm not surprised, personally. I think Mel, you know, Mel is not as cringy necessarily. Like she's got, she's got a law degree. She was on CNN. She had her own show on NBC, question mark. She had like a network show at one point. Um, she's more like professional, you know, but she speaks at MLM conferences. Hate that. She pushes people out of their comfort zone, but like forces people who are, you know, anxious to get on stage and to say cringe shit like I believe in myself just for her own you know look I've changed this woman's life like stuff like that her big claim to fame is that you know count back from five and your life will change and high five yourself in the mirror it's just like the content's so simple and silly and it's like she you know acts like she's giving you this revolutionary advice and it's just she's playing the game she's making money you know, I don't know. Hate the player. Don't hate the player. Hate the game. I do hate the game, but I'm allowed to also hate the players and I don't like her. So, and her speaking fee is between 75,000 and a hundred thousand dollars. I only know that because I was working on the Jay Shetty video and he's got over a hundred thousand dollars for his speaking fee and hers is between 75 and a hundred. So, you know, do the math. And then Amy Purdy, she is someone who has, I think like She's in the Paralympics, I believe, or she's got like bionic legs or something like that. She's sort of like someone I would not criticize super heavily because she does have a story that I find from what I know about it, which is minimal, but at least just like the little bit I've looked at. Um, it would be inspirational. It is unique. It is something I would be interested to hear someone speak about because it is a unique perspective and motivational. So the fact that like, I don't know, she would be involved in this is sort of surprising. Maybe they just hired her. Maybe, because there's all these these websites where you can go on and like hire motivational speakers. You just pay the fee and you tell them what day and what time and they have to approve it or not. But maybe, the, you know, her fee could be $10,000 and they're like, okay, well, if we sell five, uh, you know, mastermind tickets, that'll pay for Amy and Drew to come and, you know, whatever. I don't know. Or maybe they're friends. I have no idea. I'm not sure. Um, so yeah, Mel's living to the bank. <laughs> yeah, Mel's got this video where she's like, I'm gonna slither, I'm gonna show you how I get up at five in the morning when I don't want to. And she like falls on the floor. It's like, I just slither around, I slither around and I get up. It's amazing. It's like, okay, weird. Anyways, and you get a journal. $5,000 is like quite a bit of money. And I, and the people she, she's like opening this to like the people that have already done the groups before. So the 60 day challenges before. So they paid. So if, if you did the first one, you paid 250, you did the second one, you paid 250. So you're $500 in. If you then did sus on top of it, you paid $4,000. So now you're $5,000 in. Then if you went to the second mastermind, you would have to pay $4,000. So now you're $9,000. And now if you need to go to this one and you want to be involved and you want to be in the group and you want to be their friend, you'd be like $13,000 deep into this cult. <sighs> so, I mean, the thing I always think is like, okay, the first one was life-changing, right? Life-changing. I released a butterfly in the parking lot. My life has changed. Why do you need to go six months later to two more? You know, like if your life was changed, shouldn't you just be living the changed life? Do you have to, why would I go to more now? But it seems like a lot of the people that were at the first one, were at the second one, were at the third one, like the cult is forming. And I say that lightly. I do say it lightly. I don't think, you know, like, uh, like I don't, I don't think it's like Jonestown where it's like, oh, this is dangerous. Like, I think it's just where people find this, they're, they're, they believe that Heidi cares about them. They believe that Dave cares about them and they're paying money to keep feeling like they're being cared about because if they don't pay, they're not invited anymore because they're not really friends. They're, the, the, the conditions of the friendship is money. 
it's not a non unconditional love that they all share together. That's what they'll tell you. I love you. I love you guys. I love you. I'm going to teach you everything I know because I love you. As soon as I go, Hey, I actually need that $4,000 back that $5,000 back. I, I, you know, my tire bust on the way here and I, now I need a new car. They go, Ooh, sorry, babe. You can't come. Am I wrong or am I wrong? I'm not wrong. Okay. <laughs> Five grand. So anyway, so, so they're making their announcements for this mastermind. That's the big news of the day. Uh, they've been making their announcements and <laughs> this is on the heels of Heidi being in Austin to, I guess like, um, prom- uh, to record some sort of something that she can't do from Arizona because it's special. I don't know. Who knows? But um, we have some clips and it sh- it's just like random clips because I let me check if the, the full video was sent to me because that would be awesome and that would be amazing and I would love to see it as they say. Uh, I'd love to see it. Let me sign in. Hold on. Uh, okay. I, had, I have my paper with all my info on it. Um, and they're trying to like get hype around all of this, but apparently it's been kind of unhinged. Uh, let's see. Oops, I can't spell. Sorry, everybody. Now we're good. Okay, let's see. I do have some DMs. Fingers crossed, fingers crossed. Mm. Okay, I don't have the full video. So this is here. We're just going to watch. We're going to just experience this together. So this is Dave and Heidi passive-aggressively talking about their last weekend together. So, all right, real quick, one more thing about it. What is it? Um, For any of the alumni, you know what, Val? This is what we should send an email out about tonight. What should we do? Uh, or we can just talk about it tomorrow. The, the alumni discount code is ne- it's not going to expire. So I think there was a misunderstanding. Never. Maybe I said it wrong in my last email, but if, or not discount code, the alumni discount, the money off for mastermind will extend. So if you've been in um, mastermind or VIP before, Amen. until it's full, Amen. you'll have the discount. Amen. Um, I, okay, now let's talk. I would hate Dave. I mean, I don't like him, but like if I was her, like you're trying to deliver this information, you're like, oh my God, okay, wait, what day is it? What am I trying to say? And he's like, amen, amen, forever and ever. Like adding nothing. He's giving nothing to the conversation. (laughs) He's displaying his tattoo. That's about all he's doing uh, in this clip so far. Okay, but there, she's trying to explain it. She looks a little frantic, hectic. She actually, she looks better because there's no filters on this live. Uh, Let's continue. Let's talk about what I just shot. Well, do we want to talk I've about been through what some I traumatic just... <laughs> things. And uh, the last five days are one of these things that people are going to ask me about 10 years from now. And I'm going to be like, I remember. I'm still having a little bit of PTSD. It was amazing. It, would, it was I amazing. Either. Here's the thing. You're so good at what you do. So good. I love being able to I just get. I get very serious. Here's what it is. Very serious. I did not yell at you. Let's like be clear about that. I did not. not. Here's the thing. (laughs) No, you didn't. You didn't yell at me. I didn't. I just really hear it when. Was it bark? Is barking a thing? I just said, wait, no, no, scroll, scroll up, 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 no, up the other way, up the other way. (laughs) That's what it was. Don't say, don't say scroll for a while. <laughs> we were having technical difficulties. I had people on Instagram that were like, I don't know if you saw their comments, but they were like, Dave's not a cameraman. You should hire a professional. I and then I, will uh, you put know what I my did? My camera work up against any professional. How dare you? Thank well, you very much. I should have written back, Dave's not a cameraman, dot, dot, dot. Yet. Yet. Remember? Yet. Put, it, put it on the reel. Put then, it on the- okay, so. That sparked a memory in me from Rachel because in, and I can bring it up, 
let's finish this part, but then I can bring it up because Rachel did a video, right? Do, okay, the, the antithesis of Toilet Gate, the live stream that she did that caused Toilet Gate to happen, where the woman in the comments said, you're unrelatable. Um, oh, hold on. I have a new, hold on. Uh, wait, oh. You are privileged AF. You are privileged AF. Um, and she said, she was talking about it, and she said, um, you know, you're, you're not a podcaster yet. And she made it a point. She goes, see how I said yet? You can do anything. And that was her whole spiel. So is Dave just taking this and giving it to Heidi, or is there literally not an original idea in self-help? I mean, probably both, but it's like just even the lines like show up is something that Rachel used to say and has merch for. And then this thing, you're not a whatever yet was a Rachel thing, at least from what I remember. So this is so weird that they're just like both literally in the same house, replace Rachel with Heidi. And now it's the same regurgitated information. Very weird. Uh, thank you, Rach, but not Rach. Thank you very much. Oh, yeah, he had bracelets on like the other day. He had bracelets on because he was FaceTiming Noah, um, his new book coming out, FaceTime with Noah. He was like, I have bracelets. We both have bracelets. Oh, my God, bracelets, bracelets. And now apparently he's got no bracelets. So for that, I say. Most people won't get up at 4 a.m. To put on bracelets, to make the bracelets in the morning. They won't do that. Um, just remember, just remember, I am not problematic. Okay. That's all we have to say. Thank you, Rach, but not Rach. <laughs> I appreciate that. And Shilly, holy Shilly. Dang. Thank you so much. I don't know if that's a mistake number or, or what, but if you need Thank you. We'll figure it out. Uh, chipping in so you can show up and get that squirrel ass. Oh, sorry. It was a mastermind this time. Thank you so much. Can you add four, $4,900? And then I'll go. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Thank you. Um, for that. Bold face lie. Uh, bold face lie. Um, am, I, am I going to go to Heidi's mastermind? No. No, but there's a first for everything. <laughs> uh, and one more time. I really like this new one. They're going to be dropping some really powerful, amazing, life-changing shiz. That's such a good one. <sighs> That's such a good one. So thank you very much, Chili. I appreciate it. Yeah, I don't know what's... S-E-K. Where is that from? Sweden? I am not, I am not, I am not educated. <laughs> I do have a college degree, but it's meaningless. Okay, let's finish this part up. LinkedIn. I was at I'm Show saying. Up. You know what we're talking about yet. yet. Because anybody has the ability. I honestly felt like going, you can't tell Dave he's not a cameraman. Like, I also Dave think can be an astronaut if he wants. Sometimes you, know? you have to have these experiences to know what you don't want to do in life. I gotta, I gotta stand by that. Dave could be an astronaut. No, babe, he cannot. Dave cannot be an astronaut. Sorry. No. <laughs> okay, what a wonderful exchange. Thank you, everybody. Sweden, that's so cool. Are you from Sweden? Is this old? Yes. Uh, fountain drink. Okay, so while I check on this, here's another clip. <laughs> We're just gonna watch these together a little bit. I am not, uh, I don't have these lined up. The thing I do have lined up is all the times that Heidi has mentioned Chris in the last two years. And it's a little funny and sad. Okay, let's see. What is it? When I get a uh, fountain drink, my pet peeve, well, I don't chug stuff like you do. I chug. Right? Like, we could get a 32, 42. He could get a 42. I could get an 8 ounce. And he has finished the 42, and I'm two ounces down in my 8 ounce. When we go to Starbucks, I actually ask for Are we ever going to finish a Little ice. Thought? Little ice. 
I'll get a venti uh, uh, brown sugar oat milk shaken espresso, light ice. I've become my mom. I agree, Kristen. I've, be I've become Patty time. Hollis, and not. I mean, my mom does it because of value. She wants to get value for what she's paying for the for the liquid. See, I don't like that. Like, I just me, want a lot of liquid. I give me all the coffee. I just, I want something that will last me a long time. That's why I do a lot of ice, and it like nothing is worse than room temperature Diet Coke. So water has to be cold. Diet Coke or iced coffee needs to be ice cold. Yeah, yeah. like a lot. Of what are they talking about? God, these are just people that think that they, every thought that they have is interesting, which is probably someone like me, to be quite honest. But, you know, I try to work past that and not say everything that's in my mind as if it's important or interesting because it's really not. It's not. I, I order coffee with cream. Oh my God, cream. I order coffee with one pump of vanilla. Oh my God, wow. Okay, pay us $5,000 for this wonderful information. Albanese, thank you very much. I appreciate this. Is Heidi stroking Dave's ego to keep him? Um, I think that has to be the only solution. <laughs> because why else would this be going on? Um, this is what Dave says when Heidi starts talking about um, vitamins. No, what's that thing? I don't know. When, when, <laughs> when she talks about probiotics. Not your poop again. That's a weird one, but. Not your poop again. 18 stinking dollars. Not your poop again. Oh, I love that sound. <laughs> That's for you, Albanese. All of the bodily fluids are yours for the taking. Okay. Um, so that's exciting. So they're selling this mastermind very well. Use as as very young. Using their uh, communications, using his communications degree and his reporting skills, talking about his coffee loving. Um, here's another clip. We're going to watch this again. I have no idea. I can't even preface it. What's going on? They're talking about the mastermind and the details. And this is, I guess, what it's, what it's becoming. Portrayed her as very young. Did they? They portrayed her as like a, a woman. Oh, okay, okay. I think what they're talking about here is El the Elvis movie. And Priscilla being like 13. Portrayed her as very young. Did they? They portrayed her as like a, a woman. But think about the thing that they were talking about when they. Uh, um, that's true. Yeah. Okay. They did. They, they did. And, it was young. The, the very first interaction between the two of them was her almost saying, My dad's worried about you. Right? Remember that. You know why he uh, was worried about her? Because he had worried about him? Because he had reason to be. <laughs> had reason to be. Goodness gracious. Jessica, Jess was 14 in high school. You were light years ahead of me. I'm just saying, <laughs> let's say that, you know, Ruby meets the biggest performer of all time four years from now. That's a problem. Ruby's only eight. Okay, six years from now, that's a problem. It'd be more like Marley's age, which is still a problem. That's a problem. It's still a problem. That's a, let's protect Marley at all costs. Okay. okay. Um, listen, we have some housekeeping... <laughs> Okay, cool, cool, good. Keep your kids uh, safe from predators. Side I approve this message. <sighs> sort of shocking that she didn't have that immediate reaction. And also, I love how Dave does not know how old her kids are. <laughs> not shocked about that. I wonder if he knows how old his kids are. Does that mean? Yeah, that's mean. Well, oh well. Okay more clips here we go side of the community as a thing that everybody was doing and people believed us it was and they great they started doing it they started doing Dooley it sandy Dooley did yeah and also trainer Lindsay did it and jen uh did, did jen it. do it yeah oh yeah she did they all did it they also chose that song that you shouldn't have chosen listen i had no idea until someone commented apparently there are bad words in it but like also there's there's like there's there's bad suggestions in it but is there bad intention in it yeah, I'm Is pretty there? sure he's a bad person. Wait, that feels mean. Well, have you seen the video that he shot with the song? He's a womanizer. Did you, did you go look into it? I did. We saw uh, did. Elvis. <laughs> okay. Wait, what? I need a little Side background. Hold on. Okay, that's a short clip. It says, talking about the squat challenge and the song Heidi chose. 
Uh, I don't know what the words are. I don't know what song. Side of the community as a thing that everybody was doing, and people believed us. It was and they great. started doing it. They started doing it. At least it. Andy Dooley did. Yeah, and also Trina Lindsay did it, and Jen uh, Wiederstrom did, did Jen it. Did Jen do it? Yeah. Oh, yeah, she did. They all did it. They also chose that song that you shouldn't have chosen. Listen, I had no idea until someone commented. Okay, I think they're talking about... Let's put the pieces together. They're talking about... Uh, Apparently, there are bad words. The song, the one where she's squatting that I showed earlier. She's like crouched up in front of the uh, camera. Heidi Powell, you silly girl. Oh, Robin Thick. Blurred lines. <laughs> okay. That's where Dave takes a stand is Robin Thick. Okay, I'll show you this video again. Apparently that's that's where Dave's like enough. Not okay, everybody. Th this song, no. And I I don't know. I remember there was some controversy about it. I'm not a fan or a stan at all, but I feel like that was a while ago. Okay, interesting. Uh let's continue. Like I'm not Yeah, it's like a satin. It's uh it I'm not sold on this mastermind for five grand yet. Uh I'm waiting for some details that I'm gonna be intrigued by. Here we go, another yeah, clip. Yeah, it's like a satin. It's uh it's like, like smooth. Like wick it's, away or the It's like a members only jacket. Okay. You remember a member No. Nope. There was like a little I was on never a member of anything. Well you missed out. Besides that was, the uh that was a trend. Honor roll. Oh. <laughs> you know what I'm excited about? I'm excited for everyone to see all of what was shot in the last five days of time. If you want to test a relationship, I'll tell you what you should do. <laughs> Try and uh, help your partner record for five days while she uh, politely tells you how to do it better. It's just one of the one of the greater experiences of my entire life. Uh, Hold on. Before we talk about this, can I give one more thing? I love how people are leaving <laughs> the live stream. It was at 14, and then they started talking about this. They're like, mm, 11. If they sell this mastermind to 11 people, which, you know, no guarantee that they will, but let's just hypothetically say that they did. Let's say 11 times 5,000. Well, they make 55,000. That's a salary. That's a year's salary. But they got to pay Mel Robbins off, so, you know, they're going to be negative $20,000 at the very least. You better up the marketing, girlfriend and boyfriend. I mean, sorry, besties. Think about Mastermind, because I want to dive give into it, this. Give anything you'd like. Okay, real quick, about Mastermind. About Mastermind. Ooh, 10 oh, 10 now. Uh-oh. Whoa, what are all those bugs flying around? It's like... Those I are I feel like we're on Dragon Wizard of Oz. Flies. Those are dragonflies. And you know, flies. like, the Return Nine. of Oz? I do. Those I are dragonflies, <laughs> and I believe it's mating season, and we're watching a National Geographic special <laughs> out the back. And I think that they're there in part because the pool has turned green. Oh, back to 14. Okay, so basically she's like, you know about the mastermind? Oh my God, bugs. There's bugs out there. No one can see them but me and Dave. That was a good distraction. I was convinced that that was real. Okay, okay, making progress. That's good, that's good. Okay, more Elvis being a predator talk. Okay, love it. Love this from Dave. He's such an ally. He's an ally against Elvis for us. Oh, hold on. Oopsies. Is it unmuted? Here we go. Lovely flight delay last night. I'm sure we'll talk about that. Uh, I did. I watched a YouTube video about ten. Like, was this accurately depicted or inaccurately depicted? One of the inaccurately depicted things. No spoiler alert here. Is he met? Lisa Marie, while well, he was deployed in I, Germany. Okay? I can't even... In the movie, they have the sequence seem as though they're pretty close in age. Actually, Elvis met Lisa Marie when Lisa Marie was... Oh, no, Priscilla. Excuse me, Priscilla. Priscilla. Yeah, I was going to say, did I get it wrong? The child that they had. Okay, I was going to say, did I, didn't I get it wrong? Okay. Priscilla, when Priscilla was 14 years old, Ladies but was it gentlemen. different back then? Maybe it was different back no, then. No, that was still being a predator who's grooming somebody, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> the bottom line is they met and apparently were friendly. What, what is friendly if you're the king? I don't know, but that guy's wearing a military uniform meeting somebody who's what? In like junior high? 
Eighth grade. Eighth grade? That's eighth grade. What are we even eighth talking about? Grade. Why aren't we talking about that? She moved to, to, to where, where with Memphis? Yeah. She moved to Memphis at 17 or 18 years old and married this gentleman who at the time was one of the biggest entertainers on the planet. Met at 14. You know what? I'm not here to judge. Well, I am. <laughs> Heidi. Not... God, I'm not here to judge. Uh, that is one response. I mean, I agree with Dave, and this time, like, I don't like him still, but, like, what he said is true. At least he's saying, I mean, he wouldn't say this publicly, probably, since this is a private, you know, live stream. He's like, I can be an ally privately. I mean, I agree with what he's saying. It seems like Heidi's, like, afraid to say that. Heidi, I believe, and I don't know for sure, but she... And there's been some speculation based on old videos and such that she's on the conservative side. Um, I know for sure that her and her ex-husband, Chris, who we're going to talk about in a minute, um, used to have the kids sing like the national anthem every day. Uh, So that was weird. And that just to me usually means like conservative. That would be my jump. And apparently he... Chris follows some right wing people and there was like a Trump flag somewhere at one point in the house, I guess, in footage, um, allegedly. Now this is all alleged. I have not really done my research to, to follow this up, but she also was wearing a, like a 13 star hat, American flag with the 13 stars. That's been linked to these like alt right groups. And she wore it for like a full day and several stories and then apologized for it and changed her hat and said like, oops, didn't know what that meant. Some I just wore the hat because it was cool. So she sort of backtracked, but I don't think she wants to upset anyone who might have more lenient views about, you know, young teen brides or something. I don't know. She's very weird that you would be like, I don't want to judge a predator while she has a daughter who's 15 and a daughter who's eight. But okay, eh, whatever. Not okay. That is not But here, I I was thinking about that because you told me that last night. And I was thinking about it. They did have the actress look, if you actually think back, even from her hair. Okay, I don't know what she says there. But yeah, and I see the comments. That's a good point. When Dave and Rachel met, Rachel was 18, 19 maybe? I think maybe 19. And he was 27. So I will say... There is a difference between 19 and 14. And I think if the law in America is 18, then that is the law. You can look at it and go, that's creepy to me, but it's legal. I'm not going to say, oh my God, predator. I mean, I think it's young, but if you're 18, like, you know, legally it's okay. So I guess, you know, I can't really say much more than that. But yeah, it's interesting that he doesn't really see the, how the age difference between him and Rachel. I mean, I guess she wasn't in high school. She was working a job, but she would have been like a freshman in college if she went to college. So that's kind of weird. And then he was like a full on professional. You, they met at 18 and 19 and married. Yeah. Dave was 27. Rachel was, uh, was 19. I think they got married at, she was 21. I believe, or 19. Yeah, it was very short. The thing about this though, okay, this is what I was trying to figure out when I was reading Girl, Wash Your Face, because I also thought it was like, they met when she was 19, but then it was like, they got married at 19, but then it's like, well, how did he leave? How did he go? He moved away to like Minnesota for a year, and then he came back. I'm like, so how did all that time pass? Or was it like a couple weeks and they got together and got married? Like, I don't know. It seems like, the way the story was told, it was like all this time had passed, like a couple years. But in reality, maybe it wasn't. I don't know. That's a good question. I guess I can look it up. I'll look it up in a second. I'll look it up while we watch. Uh, uh, actually, hold on. I'm seeing a chat come in from Rebecca. It's going to show up in a second. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> I see. I see your comment. Okay, Rebecca says... Uh, and I was also thinking about this when he was talking about, thank you, Rebecca. Okay. Let me read your comment. 
Rekka says, it wasn't different back then. Jerry Lee Lewis lost his career over marrying a 13-year-old. It was his 13-year-old cousin, I'm pretty sure, the Jerry Lee Lewis thing, which is even worse. Um, Heidi, this is disgusting. Genuinely disturbed. I was dating an older man at 18, and that still messed me up. Yeah, I agree. I knew a girl, one of my good friends in high school was like, I think she was 17, 18, and she was dating a 30-year-old, and it's still... It's messing with her today, and it sucks. So, yeah, uh, I'm sort of just, I'm not, I'm not surprised, but I'm disappointed in Heidi. As, as the woman, too, talking and saying, like, it's not my place to judge. It's like, yes, it is. It's okay to judge, I think, when you're protecting or you're standing up for a innocent child, but I would argue that she doesn't necessarily do that. She doesn't protect her children from predators online. She posts them like with, you know, very suggestive poses, very suggestive clothing, them in bed, her daughter who's like eight in bed, like sleeping, she's posting her, you know, so she's not really protecting her kids now. So it's really not her place to judge because I guess like she does it too. So thank you, Rebecca. I appreciate that. Uh, on that very serious note, um, we'll just say... I am a douche lord. A douche lord. <laughs> um, but you know who would not do that? Rachel. Because she is the best, goodest, good girl you ever met in your life. So she would never make this mistake. Even though she did and put a half-naked photo of her daughter online. So there's no forgiveness for me. Okay. Thank you. I do appreciate that. All right. Moving on, more videos from this day or two days of live streaming. And this one, let's see what the, this one says, sympathy for a member with COVID. Bill Nye, the science guy. And then you pour. Great. <laughs> uh, if anyone has a thermometer, send it over. We're going to go ahead and break this down. This might be my next podcast. We're going to get into the thermodynamic differential of partial to full cups You're of actually ice. Wrong. I might be wrong, but just barely. <laughs> we have to find out. Uh oh, Gabby has COVID. She's home with a thermometer. Oh man. Can you Gabby come on Gabby. Maybe sterilize it, throw it in the mail. Uh, I don't I'll be honest and I hope Gabby gets well soon. I don't want your thermometer, Gabby. I want you to keep it right where it's at. Keep it right near your bedside. Um we didn't even talk about that yet. So there was a weird timeline thing, and let me get my phone because I need to put the dates in order. So there was speculation that Heidi had COVID recently because her son, Cash, had COVID, alleged, well, no, not even allegedly, her, her okay, Chris, the, her second husband and the father to her two old or younger kids posted on Instagram that Cash has COVID. So that's information. Then all of a sudden, Heidi's sick and ha goes away from the you know from social media for like two days, and then posts a photo and says, "I don't know if the photo's here or if I have it on my phone," but she says, um, "We went to Vegas, and uh, right after that, I got sick, and I was so sick, I was so sick, like I just I didn't think I would ever be well again, like so dramatic. The dramatics were off off the charts." But they were all trying to like, we were trying to figure out like what the time frame was because I don't know. She was like interacting with all these people and then said like, I had an illness. I had a little bug. And it, it, like if your son had COVID tested positive and you're sick, but she just said that it wasn't COVID or didn't, you know, didn't mention, she said, oh, I had an illness. And then she had her mastermind like very shortly before that. So it's like, were they exposed? Did they have it? There was a lot of questions. So I did want to bring that up too. Uh, not that I found out anything, you know, secretive, but uh, that was something that was speculated on. And then Dave, you know, was exposed to her and then he went home to his kids. So, you know, COVID be spreading in between Arizona and Texas because of, you know, their frequent flying probably. Okay, here's more clips. This one says, 
So when I was watching the whole video once, I felt H, so that's Heidi, wasn't happy with Dave here. Rewatching, I think she got nervous that he was talking to random members on the side. Just a weird moment. Okay, here we go. I do. I remember, yes. I remember reaching out, Aww. sending a, a text that was uh, a joke before it wasn't uh, a joke. What, what was it? I was just goofing a little bit with her that uh, I don't remember exactly what I said, but I sent something you... that was like, we, you know, we can't do it. We, we, we're, I don't remember exactly what it was, uh. but then immediately she knew I was joking like two oh. seconds after. <laughs> um, hey, we have to go to the airport. Oh, so we do have to go gonna, to the airport. Uh, do our live tomorrow. Yes. More fully. Can't wait. Let's pick a, a time text, now. With the whole thing. Should we pick a time right Tell now? Tell about all the details of the uh, mastermind. You can share a little about the experience Oh no. Of last Dave's week. here. All of the I'm going to have to move that. You know? I mean, I keep pushing my, I have an Enneagram type oh, I did typing mine. consultation. Really she, oh, did you find out what you she's, are? She's great. God. Well, the thing is she kind of confirmed what I am, but we talked about something that I hadn't ever really thought about inside of Enneagram. Be, so anyway, I just, she's a She's a great professional. What if we do tomorrow, tomorrow. at... Okay. <laughs> I banned the crazy chat bot. Sorry about that. It's whenever we talk about Dave, he shows up. He does this to us. Um, okay. So this is sort of interesting-ish. Uh, not interesting-ish. Not at all. Annoying-ish. <laughs> but interesting how he wor phrases it. Um, Enneagram. I think it's stupid. Sorry. I know. I know. I know. I just think anything where anything, horoscope, Enneagram, the one where it's INJF or whatever, I don't like them. And I think they don't work because you're already biased to want to, you want, we want to fit each other and ourselves into these categories and like help explain our personalities. And I just don't think that they work. And even, especially in this case, it's even proven my point further. Like Rachel says she is a number three or something. She's like, I'm a three. And that means this. And it's like, of course, how they already feel about themselves. Like I'm an overachiever. It's like, of course, wouldn't everyone want to be an overachiever? And then he did his consultation before and he was like a peacekeeper. But then later when they broke up, he did it again. And then he's like, oh no, I'm actually also a three like Rachel. It's like, so they're just changing it just to fit the whims of what they want. And so the fact that she's like, I need to book my appointment for my Enneagram. Like, why would this woman have any other detailed information? Like, isn't it just a test that you take? So why do you have to have, have a consultation about it? I don't know. Human design, all of it. I think it's... It's not real and people depend on it so much. And I know this is a hill that like people are be like, fuck you, idiot to me. And then like, I love it. It helps me. Great. I just don't like it. I think it's silly, but that's me. <laughs> that's me. Okay. Um, let's see. That's about it for that. I, I don't have the full version yet. So hopefully that'll show up at some point. The full uncensored version of this mastermind. Uh, because these little dribbles of information is good, but I want the full thing. Let's see. Okay. And we'll do that. We'll do a special edition. <clears throat> but in the meantime, I do want to talk about Chris. And Chris Powell sort of gets a pass from me on this channel because he does put his kids online, which I don't agree with. However, he does it in a much more tasteful way. For the most part, he sort of sticks to himself. He doesn't get involved in the drama, which I can appreciate. So I let him have a pass. Um, but I'm not a big fan, to be honest. I don't really love him. I don't really care, I guess, is, the th is really more what it's about. I don't really care about him, what he does. Like, if he's into fitness, that's cool. I'm not really into men's fitness stuff. So no reason to really uh, care. Okay, but but it is important to Heidi, and that's what's important to me. So, <laughs> so Heidi loves to send Chris like what I said. When they, let me move off of this for a second. Ugh, like like any picture that I have is like of their kids in compromised positions. Okay, so um, Heidi often will talk to Chris and refer to not talk to Chris, talk about Chris on her Instagram, <laughs> and. Um, it's been a pattern for like, you know, years. And they got divorced in 2019. They didn't announce it till right before uh, Dave and Rachel announced their divorce. I don't think that they have any sort of crossover. I believe her story when she says that 
he re- Dave reached out to her after the divorce was already going through with them, with Rachel and Dave, and that she came to town. She was in Dallas, apparently, then made the extra trip to go to Austin to be with him. She thought, like, okay, I'll get more exposure. And um, they did the podcast, or they didn't do the podcast. They just talked about divorce, and he was crying and whatever, and then he, you know, per- kept pursuing her. That's the story that she tells. I believe it, personally. Um, but I just don't think she was over Chris. I don't think she's over Chris now. I think, you know, given the fact that she had the mastermind event at the house that she shared with Chris and brought it up several, several times is further proof that she's done over him. Um, And so I went back to my archives and found all the times, not all the times, because there's been more that I didn't capture, but a lot of the times that um, uh, I'm trying, I I lost my train of thought. Uh, She brings him up in different ways. And sometimes it's involving the kids, which I find even worse but, you know, here we go. We're just going to watch it through. So it says, never knew I'd be a dance mom, yet here I am. So proud of this little girl, all of my kids, really. But then tags her ex-husband, Chris. Okay. Nothing better than seeing your kiddos pour into and excel at the things they love. At Chris, thanks for being such a great partner at helping these kiddos reach for the stars. And if you remember correctly, you know, sh- she's been very open, and so has Dave, like Dave's been open that he, it wasn't his choice to get divorced. Heidi has also been very open about not being her choice to get divorced. That, you know, Chris was the one who wanted to go through with this, that she would have stayed with him forever. She's made that very clear. Um, so they're both alike in that way. Uh, what was I going to say? Um, but he had to go on Instagram after she kept saying that over and over again, people were like mad at him. Like, why would you break up this beautiful family? Like this woman wanted to be with you. Heidi loves you so much. Like she's talking about you all day long on her Instagram. Like, why don't you like give her another chance? And he had to say like, she done, she's done something so irreparable or, oh my God, I can't speak. She did something so bad that they can never return and that he doesn't want to, you know, put the business out there, which I can respect. Um, but that it's never happening. Don't ask me again type of, you know, comment. And this was like back in 2020, I believe when he made, or 2021, we made those those comments because she was like, so, you know, saying like, I want to get, I I wouldn't have left. And he had to like explain that, no, something happened, an unknown thing that they can never come back from. That's what he said. So, but anyway, she does, she still takes the opportunity to talk about him quite a lot. Uh, okay, so this is around Christmas time, and Dave's with her, obviously in the background. But she's in. She's like, "Hold on, Dave. Wait, wait, just a second. Uh, I need to do what's important here and go find Chris." So they get up in the morning. It's like, but first coffee. I mean, dot to dot. But first, at real Chris Powell going VR in our living room. And she tags Dave, but you know. We see that the real star of the show is Chris. (laughs) How weird. I don't know. I know she's like very much into like, all my ex-husbands are best friends. Like her first husband is a part of the company that Chris has. And now Dave's a part of the company too. Transform in some capacity. But I just still think it's odd. Like, yeah, like Dave is a new boyfriend at this time. Like, I understand the kid, they have kids, the first two husbands, they have children together. It's for the best of the family that those kids get along and they feel like siblings. But Dave being here, that's just for Heidi, in my opinion. And this is again around Christmas time. It's like, if need, if indeed the more the merrier, then merriest Christmas ever. So that's Derek, the first husband. He's dad to these older kids. And then she's got Chris and, or sorry, Chris is the, dad to cash and ruby and then dave just he this was his first year not having the kids so he was spending time there which is sort sort of sad i mean it's, it is sad um okay and then dave which i thought this was odd too that you know they just had started dating this is the again the first christmas without with them being divorced so they got they announced in june that they were getting divorced rachel and dave and then this is the december of that year so what, like July, August, September, October, November, December, six months, and you're already in matching pajamas with a new family? I mean, who am I to judge? (laughs) But uh, as Heidi would say, 
I don't know. Just a little odd. A little odd. Um, okay, and it says, we were truly so caught up with every moment from the kids, blah, blah, blah. Posting is not important. Tags Dave. Okay. But then, like, I think this is, like, the same day. She's like, then there was this. Actually, this might be a different day, but she's posting memories of her ex-husband. It's cute, you know, cute little video, but like, like you're divorced. You're with a new man and his four kids. Like, why are you posting old photos and videos of your ex-husband and tagging him? And it's like my favorite night, sorry, my favorite time of night. For very good reason, tagging him again. Especially grateful for not tonight for the dad you are to these kids and the kind and respectful co-parent and friend you are to me. Even through it all, the world could use more people like you. And again, the words and what she says I think is great. It's better to, to get along with your ex-husband and the father of your kids than hate them. But I just find it to be odd at best, confusing for the kids probably, you know, if not now, later. Like, you know, I don't know. Weird, weird for Dave. Just confused overall. Just something I don't see very often. Like, I think privately, if you're good friends, like, that's awesome. But just the sharing constantly just is odd to me. Uh, okay, now she's shilling hoodies. Uh, to clarify, when I say I got one for me, I bought a men's sweatshirt for me. This is a men's sweatshirt too, you guys. It's not cuts. But, like, I love men's sweatshirts. In fact. If you were to ask Chris and Dave what I asked for for Christmas, because they both were like, what do you want? I told both of them, I want a large or an extra large men's sweatshirt. So they both got me a couple, which was amazing. And now I found cuts. Like, she doesn't mention Derek, who's also around and involved and the father of her kids. So, like, it's like, oh, I told Chris and Dave, like, Chris, my ex-husband, and Dave, my current boyfriend, what to get me. It's weird. Just interesting. Uh, thank you, Daniela. Daniela says, love that I finally made it inside of the live. <laughs> I'm excited that you made it inside of the live as well. And um, you know what Rachel Hollis doesn't want you to get inside of? I mean, this is too harsh. Maybe that's a bad setup. Maybe I won't say that. You know what Rachel Hollis doesn't want to talk about? My uterus. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what, who pushed that button? My guardian angels, my spirit guides. Rachel, who, who do you like the most? Who do you spend the most time with? Rach. What about your cleaning lady? The person who cleans your toilets. What, what about her? She cleans the toilets. Oh, okay. Okay. Do you like warm water or cold water? I hate cold water. Thanks, Rachel. <laughs> and thanks, Daniela, for your support. I appreciate that. Okay. Uh, talking about hoodies. So I'm going to be buying my men's sweatshirts for my men and for my me <laughs> from Cuts. And I'm going to customize. Uh, also, I cannot. <laughs> it's a different day. It's Chris's birthday. Let today pass without letting you know. We obviously know yesterday was the birthday of Christopher Powell. Uh, and with the birthday of Chris Powell, we decided at Transform to celebrate by featuring and discounting all of his favorite things. Chris's favorite things. Every single one of these things will be discounted at 35% off. So there are one, two, three, four, five. Uh, okay, his favorite flavors are, his number one, we have the dark chocolate raspberry, which we all know is not Dave's favorite. In fact, the opposite. Like, <laughs> you know, they, they have some sort of like, so Chris owns the Transform app now but I think Heidi still I know she does it she must because she goes to the office and like does something takes taste tests the shakes and stuff and still promotes the shakes but like okay so her promoting this is fine but then like to say like well this is Chris's flavor but this is not Dave's flavor it just I don't know <laughs> oh my gosh it's I weird. just had the my two men <laughs> are exact opposite. Uh, and my two men, but you only have one man now. It's Dave. Chris is no longer your man. He's the father of your children, but so is Derek. So I guess like Derek, I saw someone in the comments said like, well, Derek might not be want to be mentioned. That's true. But he's also kind of is mentioned sometimes in pictures and stuff. And she used to mention him before. So maybe they got into a fight or something. But wouldn't it be my three men and just not mention who Derek's by name, but like, oh, my, the men in my life. It's just like Chris and Dave. <laughs> 
the current and the one the the one I think about. Okay, that's mean, but true. And we have the oh my gosh, my top flavor one through five. Literally, if I had to make a list of ten, blueberry cheesecake is number one. I have a shake happening right here. We have the ruby red grapefruit hydration because he loves his little ruby. The pineapple mango pre workout. Then there are two more things on his list. His top list of favorite flavors that is on sale. It is a chocolate peanut butter meal replacement shake. We are out of it. I don't think we have any anywhere. So chocolate peanut butter meal replacement shake it tastes like Reese's peanut butter cup. It is really, really, really good. And then the other one is the Orchard Fresh Boost, which I am out of because I freaking love Orchard Fresh. It's that flavor of pear, white grape, and apple. It's like crisp. Um, okay. okay, this is a weird one. This is towards the end. Okay, so... I'm gonna have more on this day specifically when I do eventually talk about the kids and like their roles in my opinion in Heidi's life. But okay, so this is like a preview to that. But basically she's saying that she found out about Cash, her son's like tournament at the last minute because she traveled, she was supposed to be traveling. So she didn't know that he had this like tournament today. So it says, I found out last night at Ruby's fence, I think she meant to say dance, dance recital, and cried like a baby to Chris Powell, who truly was the best friend slash co-parent in the world, and tried to help me, and more importantly, Cash, feel okay about it. I mean, I'm, I'm glad she says more importantly, Cash, but like, why is she crying that she didn't know something that she was going to be out of town for? Like, it's just like to make this kid's accomplishment, he like won first place about her. <laughs> like, he, who cares if you didn't know about it? If you showed up and you were there, great. Why do you have to tag the ex-husband and then say, I cried all night about it? Like, okay, shouldn't we be happy for your son since you're sharing this photo of him as opposed to us having sympathy for you that you didn't plan ahead to know about his event and that you had to cry to your ex-husband about it. It's just, I'm missing something other than give me attention, ex-husband. Like what other intention is there with that? Okay, and then more. After more crying, after going home last night, I broke my other commitments, canceled my flight and all of the things to be here for this because there is not a thing that matters more than knowing this boy had his mama and daddy watching him do this hard thing today, whether he cared or not. Chris Powell, thank you, heart and crying. You weren't even going to be there. You didn't even know about it till last night. And he obviously doesn't care. So why do you like, I don't get it. Like, it just seems like this is, if this was someone that just posted, even if she just posted and she was fitness and she just posted this stuff, I would be like, okay, this is like someone who's going through crisis. And, and she does, I think she is going through crisis and she does need help in my opinion. But the fact that she's selling, that she's a personal development expert guru that you should pay her $5,000 to get life advice from. And this is the stuff that she's posting. This is where I go, okay, this is now a business. This is now going into, uh, you know, snarkable territory where there's monetary value involved. And yeah, it is okay to look at the qualifications of somebody who's claiming to be an expert and like take a, uh, in life, let me take a look at your life. Here we are. Eek. And then here's just some random ones. Like we... She calls crisp apple. She calls it crisp apple or some, there's some like inside joke thing. Then we all know I love Chris, Chris Papple. But I think the joke is because she does love Chris. And then here's some more random ones. Did you know this chocolate flavor I love so much was created by me and Chris Powell for you? I wanted the serendipity hot chocolate flavor and we nailed it. Like, okay, we, you know, we, okay. You both created the flavor. <laughs> I saved the best for last. I saved the best for last. Um, besides our kids. <laughs> besides our kids. Okay, sorry. It's just so funny when you start to say like, besides our kids, this is the second best thing. And it's like literally the least exciting thing ever. It just makes me laugh. Okay, sorry. Besides our kids, the best thing I got out of divorce. Thanks, Chris Powell. <laughs> And he, she's talking about his hoodie that she's wearing on an airplane. 
All I'm missing are thumb holes. P.S. Ankle Uggs for the win, especially on late night flights that land at midnight. So other than the children that, you know, they've created together and raised together, at least for some part of their life, this hoodie is the second best thing. So, you know, children hoodie right there. Close second. <laughs> and this is after the divorce. This is like, you know, obviously she says like second best thing I got from this divorce. So just some things I've come across. Uh, that in addition to her renting, again, the home to have her mastermind in. <laughs> Uh, where they used to live. <laughs> Very odd. Very odd indeed. Um, okay, so I'm going to open it up to the chat for just a second, and you can tell me what you rather do. Listen to Rachel uh, talk about motivation. It's short, sort of a shorter one, and we have it on her YouTube, so we can actually like look at her face while she's doing it. It's her, like, if you liked Rachel circa 2017, you'll probably, you know, find it, if, if nothing else, interesting. Um, the other option is what? <laughs> Do nothing. No, what was the other option? The other option is... Uh, oh, the other option is we can watch... Heidi explained the story of how she met Dave Hollis and you can hear her lie. I might have shown this already, possibly on this channel. I might not have. So let me know. Basically, she explains the story about how they met and um, how she like wrote Rachel a whole thing. She just says that she wrote her a whole thing because she thought that Dave had left Rachel and that she felt bad for Rachel. So she wrote her a whole thing, a DM, and that Rachel never read it. And um, that she also endorsed Dave's book and then actually never read the book, the first book he wrote, and said, it was amazing. It was such a good book. And then actually never uh, did it. Okay. Rachel. I'm seeing Rachel. I'll wait for a couple more seconds to see. Ooh, Heidi and Dave live. Heidi. Oh, you guys are going back and forth. Okay. Heidi's lies. Heidi's lies. Rachel. <laughs> okay. This is difficult. Okay. Vote for Heidi. I won. One, one, two, three, four. This does seem to be, this does feel like a, we could do both. We could do both. It's only 16 minutes to achieve your goals. Um, and then we have Heidi. Okay. My vote is, they're both short videos. Let's do Rachel first. And then, uh, let's do Heidi first, then we'll do Rachel. How about that? Okay, I changed my mind. And I only watched this the other day because I was uh, hiding Dave. Okay. I was seeing. I was seeing how, okay, the truth about how I met Dave Hollis. Love of my life. Now it says, my love life frequently asked questions. Okay, we'll do both per your request. Here we go. This is from September 1st, 2021. All right, 2021. we're do something new today, right now. Uh, I guess there's a lot of people asking questions and I don't know what they are. So I am going to answer the question that Nick says. I get a lot. Nick, I feel like I need a camera on Nick right now so you can see Nick, but there is a Nick. The, okay, this is also a callback to Jack. 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 I think, and this is a video I'm also working on and maybe we can do it all in one live, but that Heidi has stolen so many things from Rachel and if not stolen, maybe it's too strong of a word, but like heaven, heavenly, heavily, uh, copied from Rachel. Like, oh, I'm going to talk to my cameraman behind the camera, like that quirky style. And then all the other stuff that she's also taken. I think, uh, I think there's evidence to show that, you know, she's, she's taken quite a bit. So we're talking to the, this is Nick, not Jack. We're going to save Nick too. Nick, I feel like I need a camera on Nick right now so you can see Nick, but there is a Nick back there. And if you've been watching my YouTube channel, you know there's a Nick back there. Nick's gonna ask me the question. I have no clue what it is. And then I'm just gonna take a minute to uh, answer that question for you. And this is before- oh, Powell meet Dave Hollis. This is before they couldn't afford videographers. How did Heidi Powell meet Dave Hollis? And when? And when? 
That is actually the question that has not yet been answered anywhere in the world. And I'm going to tell you today. I am. Dave. Sorry, Dave. You're not going to watch this. You had too much stuff to do. We're rolling. Oh, we are. Oh, my. I, I learned who he was through social media when Chris and I were already going through our divorce. So this was probably, it was October, 2019. Chris's and my divorce started in August, 2019. Um, only because, and the world did not know, Dave did not know, nobody knew that um, I, Chris and I were going through a divorce. Um, he had actually reached out and said, hey, I, he had commented on some of my stuff, very nice guy, commented on Chris's stuff. And then he had reached out and said, hey, Try to get that I'm coming clout. out with a book in March. If there's any way you could read a copy, the galley copy, and make an endorsement for me, that would be super amazing. Um, and I said, sure, of course. He'd sent me a video message over Instagram, and it was a nice thing. He sent me the book. Like This part, I feel like Heidi comes off as like such a brat. <laughs> And I'll explain why in a second. This is just what happens in our world. We In our world, in our influencer world. A video message. Yeah, so this is the thing. This is the thing though that influencers do to each other. So then we know that it's not an assistant on the other side of the DM because sometimes a message that's sent is an assistant. So that this is how I, I become friends with a handful of them where I usually won't respond because I'm like, oh, it's just an assistant. Oh, it's just an assistant. It's just a loser person that's working for a living. Ugh. Just an assistant. Just an assistant. I was like, that's so rude. And like, oh, the influencer, you're only going to respond if the influencer sends you a special message because in our influencer world, I only want to talk to influencers. It's like, get a grip, lady. But when it's a video message, it's like, oh, it's him. And I didn't even know Dave. I thought it was super nice. Uh, he sent me the book. I was too nice to say no. <laughs> and so I wrote him his endorsement for his book. Um, Did you read his book? One chapter. <laughs> I read one chapter. To this day, I've read one chapter of Dave's book. And what's funny is when I read through some of the uh, interactions that we had, I was like, your book is amazing. Bold faced lie. I mean, the first chapter was really great. It was really great. I just, I don't, I, 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 it's not funny to me. It's like totally embarrassing that she's like, uh, like lying. The whole premise of their relationship, how they met, how they spoke is a lie. And the fact that she has no problem sharing this publicly, like, oh, my endorsement means jack shit, nothing. My endorsement is literally useless. If you see my name endorsing a book or a product, I could care less if it's actually Nazi propaganda. I don't care. Like, I'm just going to put my name on it because whatever, I'm too nice to say no. That's why it's like, don't, doesn't, do you have any sort of like integrity in this, in that? Like, oh, like I read the book and I liked it or I couldn't have, I didn't have time to read it. So I just told him I couldn't have time. I didn't have time. Like I just wrote it and said it was amazing and lied to him too. It's like, oof. And they lied in another live video. She says the same thing. Like I wrote your book and I loved it. Or I read your book and I loved it and I endorsed it. Like she says it in a different live with Dave. And I was like, Did, maybe she doesn't think he's ever gonna see this. Maybe he doesn't know that she's done this or he really doesn't watch her content. And like, he's under the impression like, oh, she loved my book. So it's a great match. And meanwhile, she's like, I'm not reading this crap. Great. <laughs> Don't blame you. <laughs> um. So ended up sending so that his book came out in March at, or was coming out uh, February, March. This is right about right before COVID had started. But February, we reached out again because he had posted my testimonial on Insta and he tagged me and I said, oh my gosh, I'm so excited. Congratulations. This is a big deal because Chris and I had had a couple books come out and it's a really big deal. And our in, in, conversation was one text back and forth. Great, blah, blah, blah happy to know you. And then he replied and said, Hey, we would love to have you and Chris on rise together hot podcast or rise together podcast. He said, I don't know if you know my wife, Rachel and I, which I actually didn't know much of Rachel at all, but he said, we have a hit podcast. It gets 10 million downloads, blah, blah, blah. I mean, huge numbers. If you and Chris would want to come on, we would love to have you in person. If you can come out to Texas. 
And and now he, he now she's gonna say, we could have lied, but I guess it would have been tough to lie, so we chose not to. Because this is before virtual. And I was like, yeah. Yeah, no one was communicating virtually before 2020. <laughs> yeah, let me talk to him. And I never got back to him after that because I was like, Chris, there's no way you and I can go on a podcast with another dynamic duo, like in my and Chris. Okay, so here's another here's another cringe moment in my opinion. She's like, me and Chris were like relationship goals, so we couldn't let people know that we were actually on the brink of divorce. And same with Dave and, and Rachel, they were also goals, so they couldn't let them, you know, their audience know that they were on the brink of divorce. It's like. No one thinks your goals. Like, I think most people realize that all of these pe they, people's relationships are scams, are schemes, that people suffer in silence for the money this at this point. Let me go back again. Sorry. Shut up, Kayla. I want a podcast with another dynamic duo. Like, in my and Chris's eyes, and the thing, the feedback we get is that Chris and I were relationship goals. I'm like, th and they were, in their own right, relationship goals to the world's eyes. Um, and so my fear was if I go on, there's no way I could tippy toe around the questions that they would ask without actually lying. So I never got back with him at all. Cause I thought, gosh, if we go on, we would have to either one, tell them that we're divorcing, which I was not ready at that point in time to tell the world that I was going through a divorce. Um, or two, we'd have to lie. Cause they would say, Hey, how do you work together and make it work? Like, how do you work so well together? And the truth is we were working terribly together at the time. It's like, how could you even consider that? Like, I thought about lying, but I guess that would have been bad. So, you know, we'd have to like, they would ask us a question. It's like the whole premise of why you would even be asked is because you're a married couple that's like doing businesses together or whatever. And you're proving that the rule that don't work with your husband isn't true if you do these five things that we do. Okay, so they're, they're failing like everyone else probably does in the world and it's like well I could have lied but I guess like you know that would have been tough and I wasn't ready to be, to be honest it's like the fact that you even had to debate this in your head it was an automatic no is shocking to me I'm um so that was kind of the end of you know Dave and I having any communication there was very little and then uh May 21st arrived and that is when Chris and I decided to announce our divorce publicly and life was you know just going on for me as normal and then about a week and a half later i was so shocked when i opened up my instagram to see that dave hollis and rachel hollis were also getting a divorce which was like i mean i knew nothing about them um, but the very little that i did know i knew nothing about them i endorsed his book and my name was like on his social media and i also shared rachel hollis quotes but i knew nothing about them was it was crazy because I do remember a couple times when Chris and I were going through after Dave and I had connected I would show Chris their stuff online I'd be like look how they work so well together like I actually would say why can't because Nick listen I mean true story you were there for so all of our shoots mm -hmm. and the shoots were some of the hardest times for me and Chris and this is something the world doesn't know right. and you got to witness the literal, like, okay, we got to break down set for an hour and a half while Chris and Heidi go figure their out. crap out. Yeah. Right. And I would see, I super toxic sounding. I mean, I think it came across in the videos, the stuff I used to watch of them, you know, after they broke up, but you can see they have major tension, like major, you know, passive aggressiveness. And it's so interesting. And it, it, this is exactly the problem with presenting your relationship as perfect on camera and perfect on social media, which Rachel and, ha and Dave do, despite what they say, like, oh, we always told them about our problems. It was always, yes, they told us about their problems that they had already solved or were working through and had come out stronger on the other side. So that is a different conversation than like, we're struggling and we don't know if we're gonna make it. They never said that, as far as I know. And I'm talking about Rachel and Dave. Um, and the fact that Heidi is getting divorced from her husband while showing Dave and Rachel, look how great they work. It's just more of a proof, like this is damaging to people because you think like, oh my God, this couple has it figured out. Why can't I get there? Why can't I do 30 days of sex with my boyfriend or my husband to make this marriage last? Like, because it doesn't exist. Like that couple that you're looking at, look how amazing they are, doesn't exist. But we're lied to that, oh yes, it is. And come to my conference and I'll teach you how to do it. 
sad. It even works on them. So think about normal, regular people that are watching these couples online going, oh my God, like they really look, Tom and Lisa, like Bill you from Impact Theory, like, oh wow, they have a billion dollar business and they, they work so great together. Yeah, right. Give me a break. They're miserable. Anyways, continue. I actually would see them shoot videos together and I would show Chris and say, look how well they work together, which is to me, like then seeing that they're going through a divorce was such an eye opener to me that like what you see isn't always real. Now what Chris and I delivered on camera and you know this Nick was real, but like you didn't get to see all of the real, you didn't get to see. Okay, sure. Yeah, gotta defend that. Like, oh, if you're gonna watch the old videos, it's still real. It's like, <laughs> you just said you had to go fight for two hours to get good enough to go on camera. I don't think that's real. Now looking back at videos, I look at some of my mic, oh my gosh, if someone didn't watch this video and say they're getting divorced, I'm like, they're crazy. Cause we were, there was tension there. Yeah, um, agreed. So all of that to say they had, you know, I, I saw their message. I actually had, I was sent by Susan, someone that works with me, both of their podcasts immediately after Dave's and Rachel's. And for some reason, I just had an idea in my head. It was not right, but I had an idea in my head that he left her. I, I don't know why I just had listened to tone. And I think it was, she, you know, with, there was whatever had been said. I just thought that she had. And so I actually sent her over direct message, a message about that long. Because I, you know, in, in my relationship, there's no, I've, I've left one marriage and one marriage left me. So I, I have no, I'm not offended either way, but it, I, uh, in my marriage with Chris, I was technically the one that did not choose to leave. And so it was, I actually felt bad for, and I sent her this big, long message over direct message and she never saw, I don't think she's seen it to this day, but, um, Dave, I sent him a message too, cause he and I had a connection. I'd never talked to her. And, but my message to him was like, I'm so sorry for all you're going through. Hope you're well. That was it. Like, cause in my mind, I thought this guy that I don't know, and I have no desire to get to know, and I don't want to date had like, he was not some, I just was not in the place to want to date. And I didn't think he would be the kind of person I would date. Um, really? no, I didn't had no clue. And I think a lot of it is because when I was outside of a marriage with Chris, where I was in the fitness industry. So maybe I automatically thought that's who I was supposed to be with, with somebody that was in the fitness world with, I don't know. I just didn't really like, and I also didn't know that I, I think she forgot that Nick is there to record videos. <laughs> She's like, did you ever know what happened with Chris and me and DMing Rachel and like, da -da 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 -da? Oh wait, you're here to record me. I forgot. Oh, hey, just make it like a video, I guess. It's so weird. I ever wanted to be married again. So the, the level of interest in a relationship was like a negative two for me and not because of him, but, and I didn't know anything about him. Um, so, and okay. Now she's going to talk about how she met him and like the, the, the state of mind he was in. And I think this is where she turned because I think she thought he left. Okay. This is where she's, she just said, she thought Dave left Rachel and it was his choice to leave her. And so now she's gonna go meet him. She has no interest in him. You know, she's just getting, going through her public divorce now. She's been going through, you know, a secret divorce, whatever. So I think she thought this guy's like, you know, got other plans. She meets him and is gonna say, oh, he's crying. He's hysterical. He can't even get a word without breaking down to tears. Excellent. This can be someone that can need me deeply. I've already had a year to prep and kind of like slowly pull the bandaid off. This guy got like the rug pulled out from under him. He's going to be an emotional wreck. I know how hard it is. I am going to be needed by this man. That's my goal in life. Perfect. And then all of a sudden he's attractive. <laughs> that's mean to say, probably harsh, but that's sort of my analysis on it. He had, he was the one, he replied back and said, yeah, it's been a crazy couple months or a crazy month. Thanks for the outreach. That was it. And I, you know, <laughs> Maddie says, what's a public divorce? So they had secretly divorced already, or were already going through their divorce, like se settling their finances, I guess, getting rid of their house, like splitting custody and stuff already, I guess. But then they hadn't announced it on Instagram <laughs> is what I mean kind of a thing. And then I, you know, he sent whatever he said, I sent a message back to him and said, 
hey, just so you know, this is why Chris and I did not, this is why I ignored you because we've been going through this for a year. We didn't want to tell the world. We felt like it wouldn't be a good idea. And I think this was a couple weeks later, like four weeks after he had announced, then he had said, I totally understand, no harm done. Hey, if you're ever in the mood to podcast about divorce, let me know if you're ever going to be in Texas. And I'm like, crazy enough, I'm going to be in Texas. So I was flying out to go meet with Donald Driver um, for some business stuff that Donald and I were doing at the time um, in Dallas, like a week later. So I responded to Dave and said, I'm actually going to be in Dallas in a week so I can hop a flight over to Austin, Here, stop girly. by, we can podcast about divorce. Because talking about the things that are hard is the most therapeutic for you. And I, that's kind of what we had both agreed you know what might and he was like listen we can press record and if it's a crap shoot then we're gonna delete it you know or we can edit anything out but let's at least try to record a podcast so i showed up at his house on are you ready for the date july 19th 2020 was when i showed up at dave hollis's house Why we didn't even important? we had not even had a phone conversation it the was date. just over text i had noah was asleep taking a nap his kids were away at camp and I find that weird that she remembers all these details that Noah was in the bedroom sleeping. It was this date at this time. Like, I find this very odd. Like, I can't remember anything like that. Like, oh, like our first date was like four years ago. I have no, the date, the time, the place, the whatever. It's like odd. I remember pulling up in his driveway and I remember seeing him come out of the house to greet me. And right away I'm like, Damn, like he's actually attractive. <laughs> I was so serious. Yeah, Jill, oh, the only, sorry, got cat hair in my mouth. Um, the only date that's significant is I think Rachel moved out like June 20th or something. And this happens like a couple weeks later and seems very quick from her departure you know, they had, they had sort of not publicly announced it for like a couple weeks, I think. Like they had pu per personally talked about Rachel and Dave and then they publicly announced. And But yeah, she moved out like in June. So it was a very short time before she was already interacting around Noah, you know, some, somewhat. Serious and focused. Eye on the road, which I did not expect. I don't know why, probably because I just wasn't looking for that. But he... Um, I thought, he, than you thought? I thought he was 5'8". And maybe it's because I was married to Chris, who was 5'8". Dave is 6'4", and then hair. So Dave's like 6'5 and a half. Oh, he's that tall. He is so tall. So tall. Um, and so I, but I could tell he wasn't in a happy place. He was just, you could tell he was hurting. And so I walked up and I'm like, how are you doing? And he just was like, not good. Not good at all. And it, we walked through the house. I also find it interesting that he was already going to podcast because at that time, Rise Together was Rachel's podcast with Dave. So it must have already been decided on pretty early on that he was going to keep the rights to the podcast and the ability to make the podcast, which I thought was a weird move and still is a weird move to me. But he took me weird. to where the, we were going to podcast. I think he actually gave me a tour of the house first because he was trying not to cry. He was trying to get his mind off of talking about what we were talking about. And when we finally settled in the chairs that we were going to podcast in, he could not get through one sentence without breaking down crying. And he, I mean, it, it was really, really a rough thing. And so I felt- And that's when I knew <laughs> I was going to get him in a relationship immediately. Like that to me is like red flag. Like not that it's wrong of him to be emotional, but that that person is not ready to be in a committed relationship in, in any fast, like, I don't know, accelerated fashion at all. That to me, it's like, okay, as a mature person, as someone who, you know, understands heartbreak as she's gone through two divorces at this point, I'm not going to, you know, bait him into any sort of relationship or even even give him any signal that this is, is a good time for him right now. Not that it's her decision or her place to, like, tell him no, but, like, I think that would be a normal red flag for people to take and pick up on and go, mm, you know, I don't think this guy is really ready for this at this time. But just me? Maybe. Okay. Uh, Albanese, thank you so much. 
Albanese says, funds for Taro's shopping spree at Pepco. Aw, Taro. You want to go shopping spree? <laughs> She's been pl- she has been playing with all her toys. I need to add more um, videos to my Instagram. Um, for that, Taro, I have a question for you. What happened to dinosaurs? She's thinking. She'll get back to us. <laughs> Thank you, Albanese. <clears throat> Albanese, um, one more thing for you. But also... Most people won't get up at 4 a.m. Did you know that, Albanese? <laughs> thank you. And Kat says, Kat McCollum says, um, thank you very much for that 18 stinking dollars. I need to make sure that I mention that. 18 stinking dollars. And it's American, not Swedish. It is 18 American dollars. <laughs> Thank you. Kat says, my dad's pastor gives me major Dave Hollis vibes, and I've slipped up and accidentally referred to him as Dave multiple times. Dave could be and probably will be at some point in the future a youth pastor. I feel it in my bones, as they say. And uh, for that, 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 that possibility is giving me life. And he'll be like, are we talking about the Bible? No, I'm talking about my book. Dave, you're talking about peace, aren't you? No, I'm talking about buying my book. Thank you, Kat. And in the meantime, um, we've had more nudie uh, adult chat bots, so those are banned. Sorry about that. Thank you very much, Kat. I appreciate that. And for the last time... Oh, I love that sound. <laughs> that one's for Kat. Okay. Okay, back to it. Like, okay, I am this person who's been through a lot. I've been through a divorce where I did choose to end a marriage. And then I went through a marriage where I, even though it maybe wasn't good for either of us towards the end for the past, the last half of it, I would have stayed in forever because I did not want to have another do I didn't want to deal with the things that come with divorce I didn't want split family I didn't want to run kids around in two different I didn't want the stigma of being a um, twice divorced mom or woman and so I understood where he was coming from they had been married for or together at least for 19 or 20 years and for him he's like a forever kind of a person and so just kind of helping him letting I didn't even really help him all he really needed was an ear and me giving him my feedback or hearing him and then giving feedback and assuring him that everything was going to be okay. Um, it turned into a three or four hour conversation. And at one point he was like, what are we doing? I need to turn on the podcast mic. And I'm like, you're crazy. You're not podcasting today. Neither am I. He's like, I feel bad. You're in Texas. And I'm like, I don't even care. It is totally okay. So it just was a great therapeutic conversation between the two of us. That was nothing. There was no flirtation, not even close. There was just healing and not even the slightest. It was like, there was relatability. Like we had common ground. There were a lot of aspects of who we each were in our last marriage that we could relate to with each other. And so, and sometimes all you need in a place of darkness and hurt is to not feel alone. And we both had that like we didn't feel alone yeah that's yeah it's a good base for every relationship feeling not feeling alone i mean i get it man i get it but that is not a solid ground to start a relationship from it's not especially now i'm taking my perspective is from someone who doesn't have kids and i can understand like yeah i've been there where i'm like yeah i don't you know i'm not really healed emotionally i don't like the world healed but like i'm not really you know feeling like a hundred percent but you know this person's here they're willing they're available they like me i don't really feel like a hundred percent but okay let's see where it goes and then sort of regret it later (laughs) in certain times in my life but I don't have children. So that has to be a huge decision that you have to make. Like, am I going to drag my children who are innocent and are forced to live with me through a relationship that may be rocky because at least 50% of it is coming from a very, very fragile place. So the fact that she's pursuing this as like, no red flags to me. This guy's crying for four hours. He just got divorced from a marriage from 20 years. Full speed ahead, like that's concerning. That's the word, solidarity. Um, 
And so that's kind of how I, and I actually remember leaving and I had called my publicist, Molly. Do you know Molly? And I, we were talking about something. I think I had told her I had shot the, where we, I didn't, the podcast didn't happen because she cared because she's my publicist. And I, she was like, oh my gosh, you are going to marry Dave Hollis in the car. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, oh, oh. that really shows the difference between Dave's teeth from now until then. That was like a good shot of him. He's got veneers now, if you didn't know. And Heidi was doing a commercial for the dentist where he got the veneers from. So maybe they were free. No, like not even close. And it, it was so funny though, but that like stuck because I was like, I, I just didn't find him. I wasn't in a place. He and I did not find each other attractive in that way. Um, and he's... Mm. <laughs> okay, so what changed? And then it's like, so what changed? Oh, nothing. We went to dinner and then... Okay. He sent a really great thank you, a kind text that, you know, next day and, or that night. And then it led to like one text a day. Just, I checked in, I think a couple days later, and then he would check in on me. And it, Ladies and gentlemen, I'm a you are a natural. I'm a natural. That has not caught a fish. Turned into a friendship that then turned into him inviting me to dinner. And like, I guess it was two weeks later, a couple weeks later. Um, oh yeah, so much time had passed. Two weeks later, we went to dinner and then we were in love. It's like, that's not enough time to develop anything. And, and like the way she said, like she's about to say it, I think. Like they sent song lyrics back and forth. That's exactly how he met Rachel. He, they, he went to her job. She entered, like walked him back to the meeting he was supposed to be in. They exchanged numbers. And then they sent each other emails or uh, emails, I guess, back and forth of like rap lyrics. And then he asked her to dinner. So he's literally doing the playbook of what he, how he met Rachel. <sighs> trying to recreate the Rachel scenario. I don't know. And we created a really incredible friendship over distance that I think could not have been created if we lived close to each other. It's just not true because, um, or it's, it's not, it wasn't, it wouldn't have been possible any other way. Um, yeah. I think that's a good place to stop. I don't want to, yeah. we don't want to there we go. No more, no more. You're done. <laughs> <laughs> we can, uh, we can find out. Okay, basically they're like teasing, like we're gonna tell you what color shirt she was wearing last on the first date in our next video. But I don't think there ever was a next video about this. At least there was never a follow up because I think that they had broken up or something at that time. <laughs> or they were on the they're basically on the rocks, like the whole relationship. So that's it. That's it. Um, I guess they did a they did the do I have a new roommate video. We already watched that one um, where they talk about like are we gonna have a baby? And then, yeah, and then they didn't, <laughs> I guess. Um, and just so we can see her videos, that that one that we just watched has 34,000 views. It's right up here. The rest are like pretty much like Dave's YouTube channel and Rachel's YouTube channel. The only ones that are really getting views are things with Dave involved and uh, tea. Because the rest is like 2,000, 5,000, 3,000, 1,000. 1,000, 1,000, one, yeah, and now it's in the 900s. So I think she also sees the benefit of keeping Dave around because when they do stuff together, people who are probably hating on both of them are interested and at least they can pull that into engagement. Eek, yikes. So that was a blast from the past. Um, yeah, let me see for one second. I have like sort of a follow-up to that video, but I don't know if I labeled it correctly it's the one i was just talking about where where she admits that um that she lied <laughs> uh, hold on let's see let's see she's like oh i remember when i read your book it was so good and and rachel and i are besties okay give me one second let me look at this closely hold on
I'm still looking. Give me one more second. Hold on, everybody. In the meantime, you can listen to my cat. Say meow, 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 meow. Oh, it was a live video between the two of them. Okay, well, I'll have to find it at a different time. I don't know. I can't tell based on the thumbnails. It's um, it's basically them talking, and I think they're in the same house, but they were somehow like live streaming for some reason, and it was like them talking about uh, Rachel texting Dave saying like oh you should take Heidi out to this restaurant it was obviously early on in their relationship because like Rachel was still oops, Rachel was still on the um, positivity chain train oh my goodness Kitty's being ignored do you want pancakes you want pancakes come here come on she wants to go outside that's what she wants but she can't do it because daddy needs money. Daddy needs to make those books and sell some books. Okay. All right, here we are. <laughs> We're on Rage Talk. So this is a short one also. So again, just to preface this video, this is Rachel Hollis. Uh, she posted this eight days ago, um, but it really is more like she posted this four years ago because it sounds like Rachel Hollis of yesteryear when she first wrote girl wash your face it is returned in several ways one excuse me the religion um she quotes scripture twice she doesn't curse she's very vague it's very you know vanilla but like good well delivered advice um that is you know uh, swallowable for everybody so that's what this video is going to be about. And then she talks about Rage Talk at the end, the Rage Talk Live event at the end, to be more specific. Uh, this has 2,400 views. A lot of people were happy about it. it. says, where has this Rachel been? I love this. I love your videos. Oh, my God. Thank you for this video. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Someone says, aren't you the person who said to a fan, I'm so rich, I can't be relatable, and then compared yourself to Harriet Tubman, acting, acting like you were the same as her? <laughs> and then another person says, also the person from day one preached being human, acknowledged they would make mistakes that we all do, and the value is learning from mistakes to improve as a person. So that was their clap back, like, <laughs> we all human here. <sighs> Anyways, okay, achieve your goals. And first, we want to say thank you to Jour565. Thank you for that super chat. Jour565. Uh, for that... I will actually do something obscene for you. But you have to wait and watch to the end. And if you don't... Unfollow me. And... I'm sorry that you don't have a job. Is that this wasn't day? nice. Thanks, Dave. And thanks, Jour565. I appreciate that. Okay, here we go. Rachel. Rachel live from her room. Today, we're getting motivated. You guys, straight up. That's what I want to do. I want to motivate you today. Whatever it is you're working on, you're going back to school, you're on a health journey, you have a business idea, you know, you got a side hustle, you're trying to train for your first half marathon, whatever it is you're trying to do, today's episode is for you. It is just straight motivation. It is straight energy. It is the kind of thing that I wish like I could go access in the world and just. Okay, the thing about this though, she's like, you know, setting it up. Like, okay, this is motivation. When she did the Skinny Confidential podcast that I talked about, you know, at length, and she went on to the podcast of the people who own Dear Media and said, um, you know, I don't want to, people put this on me that I'm this motivational woman empowerment speaker. Like they put this label on me. All I want to do is create cool shit with cool people. I want to be like John Favreau. Like, you know, I finally have the, the confidence and the ability to do whatever I want. And I actually liked it better when I didn't have any followers because no one cared what I did. And I was like an artist. And now 
you know, they did this to me and I don't, I don't want to do motivation. I don't want to motivate women anymore. I'm more deep than that. I'm okay. Great. Whatever. So what is this? (laughs) What is this? Like, are we needing money or what? Like, are you having a crisis, like identity crisis? Because I thought like, okay, this is done. Like this is settled. But I think she, she thought that her new image would just attain a new audience. And she hasn't found that. She had her one core audience, and I think that's the only audience she's going to find. Now, can she get back to them? It's going to be a hard-ass road. Hard-ass, high mountain to climb, as she would say. But she's done it before. She's climbed the mountain to be at the top, so who knows? But I think that's what she's discovered now. Like, oh, shit. I can't just talk about my boyfriend and my feelings about people on planes and make a million dollars. I actually did do something different before that inspired people. Now, again, I don't think she can go backwards. You've made that mistake already. Too much time has passed. Too much truth has been told. Dave's no longer there. Like the facade is gone, but she's going to try. So let's give her a chance. It's like, hear somebody pump me up and tell me why I can do it. That's what we're going to do today. I'm going to tell you why you can do it. And I really freaking hope that you find it helpful. And if you do send it to someone else, Who needs some motivation? Let's go. Let's go. Y'all, right chatter. Right chatter. And that's that's a Dave line. Or at least it was when they were together. Let's go. As Max says. That wasn't so she's like, even like, okay, I'm gonna quote Dave again. Had her coffee. I did. Did have my coffee and pumped. This. And she wasn't supposed to have coffee either. She said she gave up coffee for Dr. Amen. Again, it's just like, okay, we're back. We're back to Rachel. She's saying, let's go. She's drinking coffee. She's back. And none of the other wellness stuff is a part of this anymore. This is my hill. You know how there's like, oh, I'll die on that hill. I will die on this hill. With the belief that every single human being can make change. Not all at once. Not, you don't snap your fingers and suddenly everything's different, but small incremental changes add up. They add up to big things. And it's exponential growth that happens when you begin to believe, truly believe that this is possible for you. So here's why. Here are three reasons why you are gonna make this happen. The first one is because- Make this happen, I love it, so vague. Because you are a warrior. Okay, don't roll your eyes at me. (laughs) You have lived through way worse stuff than this. I don't know your story. I don't know what has happened. But whatever discouragement you're feeling, whatever voice in the back Mm -hmm. of your head that tells you the reasons that this dream can't be yours, I want you to clap back at that voice, call BS, and be like, no. BS. Because if I was going to go down, I would have gone down when this happened. If I was going to go down, it would have been when I lost my parents. If I was going to go down, it would have been when I was with an abusive ex. If I was going to go down, it would have been for these reasons during this season, I would have gone down then. But you know what? Life didn't get me. It didn't get me. And so it's not going to get me now. You are so freaking strong. See, the problem is... That most people will go through hard. Won't get up at 5 a.m. 4 a.m. Sorry. Most people won't get up at 4 a.m. And I agree. I see the comments are like, these are valid points. These are amazing things. I agree. However, here's my, here's my problem with it. And it's not the same problem I have with like, obviously like vaccines are not real or medicine is for weak people. Like that is a whole different level of problematic. The problem I have with this type of content and this industry, maybe it's just not for me and I should just shut up and go away and not make comments about it. But it fills a void that's not real. And that's why it's temporary. So like, you know how people say like, Oh, the people who are against abortion and just want babies, like babies are such an easy um, class of people to like, you know, they're so innocent. They have done nothing wrong. They're cute. They're in, you know, like I said, innocent, but like they, uh, they can't cause you harm. They're just, they're so, you know, little and helpless. 
And so people really rally behind them and go, we need to save the babies. But then as soon as that baby becomes an adult, it's like, lazy ass like that seems to be a narrative that happens like you know once it's a once it's not a baby anymore you're on your own I have no sympathy for any other person you know whatever and I feel the same with this type of content I'm trying to bridge the gap between those two thoughts the bridge is that this type of content is so easy to say like I love it's so easy for me to go I love you you are amazing you are strong you are successful you're gonna do this okay because there's no one that I need to know or talk to or or believe in I can just say it and have no stakes in it if I tell someone in my real life that I don't believe can accomplish because they're like, I'm going to become president. And, you know, they've got six felonies and they're, you know, on drugs and they're running around the streets. And I go, you know what? I don't think that's going to happen. I think, you know, these steps would be easier, at least right now until we, you know, there's more stakes. Like if I tell this person, I lie to this person and go, yeah, like, I don't know if that's going to work. Or maybe you should think about this. Like it's, 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 there's more you know, you have to give and take, but this type of content, when you don't know the person, you're speaking to a camera and going like, yes, queen. Yes. It's just, it's meaningless. It's totally meaningless. And the fact that people make so much money from it is insane to me. It's like, this is because I think we don't have close relationships anymore, you know? And if we do, there's something deep inside of us that go, this person's bullshitting me. This person is telling me, oh, I can do it, but doesn't believe I actually can. Like people in our real life, like my boss tells me that he wants me to succeed, but when I ask for a race, he doesn't give it to me. Or my partner says that he, you know, believes in my, you know, career aspirations, but doesn't ever give me extra time to, you know, really work on stuff. He's always asking me to like do the laundry, whatever. Like, because there's no stakes for Rachel, she can just say like the nicest shit possible. And people are like, yes, thank you. But you don't get to actually follow up with her. And so say like, let your, you know, words match your actions. And that's the problem. And as soon as like, let's go back to toilet gate. And she said, I don't want to be relatable. That to me summarized how she feels, actually feels about us, you, everyone, that she doesn't want to be associated. She doesn't want to be considered in the same category as your average boring ass. She does not like you. She does not want to be near you. She's actually probably disgusted by you, whoever you are out there, because she lives her entire life to be better than you. She gets up in the morning. She's tired every single day for the very fact that she does not want to be on the same level as you. That's her truth. (laughs) This crap that is coming out of all these motivational speakers mouths is so easy to say. The reason I don't say it and make a million jillion dollars is because it would make me feel disgusting to lie to people that I, people, I don't know. I'm talking to a camera. Like, this is not a real thing. And so I see people like <laughs> comment, oh, this is nice. I agree. I totally agree. If I was to read this on a piece of paper or even have, hear her say it, I'd be like, yeah, I agree with everything she says. She says nothing that I disagree with, honestly, in this whole thing. I totally agree with 100%. I just find it that we are not putting ourselves out there to be rejected by people in our real life and instead listening to shit like that where these people have zero stake in our existence. That's the problem. And I'm sorry, I just went on a complete psycho rant. But it's just like, I need to get this out there. (laughs) All right, Rachel, you've motivated me to like go insane. Let's continue. Things. And because going through hard things makes us feel weak. Let me say it again. Because going through hard things makes us feel weak. We believe that we are weak. And that is not true. If you have survived something hard and if you are listening to this, you have survived something hard because you have gone through a global pandemic, COVID for sure affected you somehow. And because you were on the other side of that thing, that means you were strong enough to survive. How is a muscle built? Think about it. You go, you go into the gym, right? And you're like doing bicep curls. 
a muscle is built because you're tearing down the tissue of the existing muscle and it's growing back stronger. You grew back stronger. You see the thing that happened and you think that it makes you weak. And I am telling you that the stuff that you have lived through is exactly why you are capable of pursuing this dream. Grab a journal and I want you to write down all of the things that you have lived through and overcome. I think that writing like this works best when you sort of do free form. You don't think about it. You set a timer. You're like, I'm going to write for 20 minutes no matter what. And you just go as fast as you can. And I say go as fast as you can because if you go fast, you won't second guess yourself. Okay, writing your journal really fast. Free writing your journal. That's a tip. Love it. Good tip. I journal. Not all the time, but I do journal. No problems. (laughs) Thank you, Kat Lopez. I appreciate your your uh, super chat and just remind let's go back to Twilight Gate once again I'm super freaking privileged you are privileged AF rage 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 am I the only hippie most people won't get up at 4 a.m she cleans the toilets <sighs> okay I got that off my chest thank you so much thank you Kat I appreciate it <laughs> I did not expect to get that uh heated and like literally sweating out of my armpits excuse moi Thank you, Kat. I appreciate that. Thank you, Kat. I appreciate that. Five, four, three, two, one. Anxiety is done. That's Mel Robbins. That's a Mel Robbins remix right there. Okay. Continue. Ying. And just write it down. I am strong because of this. I am brave because of this. I didn't give up when this happened. I showed up even though I was tired. I was sick. I was hungry. I was homeless. I was lost. I was unsure. I was addicted. Whatever your story is. It's the reason that you are strong. You are a warrior. That's why I know you can push this dream across the finish line. Celebrate yourself. You have worked so hard. You have. It's like, have I? I don't know. You don't know me. (laughs) I could have taken a 17 year break. You don't know. And I appreciate, I guess it's like, again, I just think this is like the most vague. If, if you're homeless, if you have a boyfriend, if you had a girlfriend, if you breathe air, this is for you. It's like, why would someone want to create content like that? Well, because it could sell more to more people. You have more of a chance to get a net. Why are there not like more revolutionary restaurants, more risk-taking restaurants? You know, why are more cuisines not being utilized in America? Well, because burger joints are going to sell. Pizza places are going to sell because people like the stuff that they like, you know? It's like taking risks, being more safe with content is like where it's at. And I just find that so boring. So boring. (sighs) And you're still here. And the only reason you listen to this podcast, the only reason is because you're seeking. And it's bullshit. Last thing. And it's bullshit. The fact that like, I just don't believe that she really gives a shit is if you succeed or not. But if you keep buying her classes, if you kept failing, failing, failing for 20 years, but you bought her classes or her courses or her book or whatever, she's not going to care. That's what she cares about. The bottom line. And that's why it's like, don't, you know, pee on my leg and tell me it's raining. Like that's the stuff that I just hate someone who doesn't believe what they're saying but can like she's an actress you know she got into acting well she wanted to be an actress in LA and she became an actress in LA that's what I think happened here okay I'm done I'm playing it full is because you believe that there's something more and that it's possible for you to have that so give yourself credit for what you have done the second reason that I believe that you can achieve this goal is because your creator would not have put this idea on your heart. If you- Oh, my creator. Um, I love this, Marlena. It's motivational cold reading. Yes. It's, it's like, were you born? Do you have a mother by chance? Yes. Oh my, I knew it. Did you go through a hard thing once? Ah. Oh. I knew my spirit guides, my guardian angels, my spirit guides. They told me that. Okay. Give me more money. I'll tell you more. That's how it is. This, I, that is like, I'm going to steal that and make a book. 
<laughs> I'm going to make a book. Girl, stop mo- motivationally cold reading me. Thank you for that. I really liked reading that and finding it, find it very t- perfectly succinct. If you were not capable of pulling it off. I cannot tell you how many times I have heard stories from women in the community, listeners of the podcast, they've read the books, they come to conference or whatever it is. I wish that someone would do this thing. I wish that someone would do this. I wish this would happen in my town. And I've had this too, where I'm like, why doesn't anyone fix this? Why doesn't anyone care about these people? Why isn't anyone talking about this? And then I feel like at some point, God or the universe or your angels like knock you upside the head and are like, girl, boy, friend, the reason that you care about this thing so much is because you are the answer. God would not have put this on your heart if you were not capable of seeing it through. Why are you playing small? Why are you, why are you like dipping your toe into your dream. You're like, I really... I already listened to this, obviously, but I, I feel more annoyed this time around because it's almost like the the highlight reel is there. Like, the best, greatest hits Rachel Hollis mixtape is out. You know, like, you're a warrior. God put this on your heart for a reason. Why are you playing small? It's just like, it's tiring. I'm tired of this. Because this is not just her. This is every, this is Tony Robbins in a nutshell. This is Mel Robbins in a nutshell. This is what Dave Hollis wishes he could be. This is Heidi Powell wishes she could be. This is what any person you're ever going to go to any conference, Jay Shetty is going to be. This is what it boils down to. This is all of the repeated stuff. And it sucks because what they're saying they do and what they actually do is not true. And it makes me feel like if someone is telling me like, oh, I really care about people. And then I watch them, you know, stomp on someone's head outside of a bar or something. I'm like, okay, that's obviously not true. But it's like, that's how it feels. It's just like, it's all about the money. And everything in life that I've come across, very, very, very rarely in in my experience has been someone told me something and then it turns out to be true. Like what they say, like I'm a good person and it turns out to be true. Usually people who say stuff like that are the opposite. So the fact that motivational speaking is like, I'm gonna teach you how to do this. Like usually the person who's saying it is like the worst person possible. (laughs) Okay, I'm done, I'll get for real. I really wanna do this thing. I'm just gonna like dip my pinky toe in so that I can pursue it in a way that is the least alarming to other people, that will keep me safe, that will keep the target from my back, that will keep people from judging me. So I'll just like be dream adjacent. I I heard this quote years ago and I love it. Like the potential that you have inside of you, that is your creator's gift to you. What you do with that potential is your gift back to God is your gift back to the universe, is your gift back to mankind. There's a reason that you have... Okay, I'm sorry again. Like, okay, remember when she was... Now she's she's like denounced them, sort of, which I appreciate. I gotta give her credit, more credits due. She's sort of denounced MLMs. But imagine this speech, which is like basically her, you know, again, her her typical you know, delivery, her typical notes that she's given at other keynotes. Her at a Beachbody conference giving this speech with the illusion that becoming a Beachbody coach or ranking up in your doTERRA, you know, uh, MLM or your Herbalife or your Monate is going to somehow give God the pleasure up in heaven is so ridiculous because that's what they're telling you at these conferences that that's your this is your ticket to purpose and you know a meaning in your life to have an a downline that's serving you and you know if God's giving you money if it's on your heart if someone reached out to you it's divine intervention like all this shit it's like that's where I start to go astray too because not everyone, like, you got to realize like the context of what this message, this vague message can mean so many different things. And if you're at a conference, what they're trying to sell you a product, you start putting it in that mindset of like, oh yeah, being an Avon distributor is my purpose. That is serving God. That is just so out 
out of left field, insanity waters, insane to me that it's just like, that's where I go, okay, that's why this is dangerous. Because it is compelling. It is very compelling. It's like, oh, yeah, my purpose. My purpose to make an Etsy shop. It's like, can't we just be on earth and live and get to know each other? I think that's what purpose is supposed to be. Not fucking capitalism constantly shoved down our throats that that's the only way to please God or please ourselves or be worth anything in this lifetime. Oh, if you're a mama, don't just be a useless mama. Be a working mama. It's like, oh my God, just let her be a person. God, let her read a book. (laughs) This exact idea at this exact moment in life. I think often we, you know, we sort of look down at our hands and we think, who am I? Every single person that you admire, who am I? Mother Teresa, Nelson Mandela, Gandhi, Martin Luther King, like every single world changer you admire was a human who believed that they could. And it doesn't mean that it was easy. And it doesn't mean it. I wrote this on Instagram when this podcast first came out, but I I believe it to be true. This is the direct opposite of her comparing herself to uh, Harriet Tubman and Malala Lucefzi and Oprah. You know, that was her in 2020. Now she's going to say, you're no different than Martin Luther King Jr. You're no different than Gandhi. You know, you're no different, which Gandhi and Mother Teresa are sort of controversial now. And she's such a history nerd. She would probably know that by this point, but okay. Okay. So if this is like, okay, this is me redoing motivation, but the right way. I'm not like Harriet Tubman anymore. You're like Martin Luther King. It's interesting. It didn't come at great risk, at great cost, and sometimes yeah, their Chan life. Too. But they just... And Wu Zichan was like a murderer or something. I don't know much about Chinese history, to be honest. But I know she was like, she murdered her entire family to rise to the top of the the dynasty. It's like, okay. I thought that was a random one for her to choose as well. Just like you, I'm sure had moments where they looked at their hands, where they looked at themselves and thought, who am I? It's on your heart for a reason. And I believe that if it's on your heart for a reason, then you will be guided to where you are meant to be at the time you are meant to be to see this through. One of the most famous scriptures from the Bible is, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. If you, you know, if you, if you grew up in the church or in the church now, you're familiar with that line. But what I always latch on to that I feel like people forget, maybe you're in a season like that right now where you want to give up, where you want to quit. And I want you, even if you're not in that faith, to think of the scripture, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no. I'm not religious at all. I'm not going to think of, yay, the, that's not going to work. That language is not going to work for me. I'm sorry. Yay, the valley of death. Uh, No, I'm good. I'm good. That's not going to work. That language is not going to work for non-Christians, I don't think. Uh, Kimberly says, and Kimberly, shout out to Kimberly. Hey, ooh, ooh. I don't have my button. Hold on. Uh, Kimberly is a patron supporter. There you go. (laughs) Welcome, Kimberly. Thank you so much. Uh, And thank you for the super chat as well. Uh, Kimberly says the blinking is such a sign of everything she's saying is BS. Yes, I tend to agree. I don't know. I mean, some people are like, oh, I'm a expert on like body language and whatever. And I'm skeptical of that as well. Like body language, like analysis, because it can be wrong if you're neurodivergent. So I'm sort of like, "Mm, I don't know, like I'll I'll take it with a grain of salt. But I I do think what she says, I think because of everything she's revealed already on past podcasts that she doesn't want to do motivation for women anymore. The fact that she's back to it is already a sign of deception. So I agree with you. Rach is fuller my uterus is full of her uterus rach is a douche lord self-professed thank you kimberly i appreciate it and see you in the patreon later (laughs) 
no evil. Thy rod and staff, they come for me. You don't need to hear the whole thing, but basically the idea is that even in the darkest moments, the creator is there guiding you through. But what I think that people miss in that scripture is, yea, though I walk through the valley, I don't lay down and die there. That scripture is about being guided. It's not about just the comfort that you get from something greater in the hard seasons. Right now, the hard season, right now, post-divorce, right now, you've lost someone you love, right now, you're out of work, right now, you're sick, right now, you have a loved one who's going through something, right now, you don't know what to do next, right now, you feel stuck. Let me get every possible scenario possible, cold reading, cold motivational reading, cold motivational speaking so true so good you are being guided and the thing is the strength that you earned from getting through the valley is exactly what you need to make this dream come true you don't have to believe i'll believe enough for both of us that if you have this idea on your heart there is a reason it is there and it is possible the third to lowest stakes again the lowest stakes I'll believe for both of us. Yeah, that's wonderful because you don't have to hear anyone's story. You don't have to hear anyone's feedback. It's like saying like, I will, I will care for you. I will be there for you. Who, when, how? Moving on. <laughs> it's like, uh, meaningless. Third truth about why I know that you are gonna achieve this goal. The reason that you are going to achieve this is because you have to. There are people who are counting on you. If you have- The weird staring is also turning me off. I listened to this on, on podcast, as she would say, on podcast, um, not on the podcast, just on podcast. And I didn't get the eyes. Obviously, this is the first time watching this. It's fucking annoying me. You have to. As if she's like, big sister, tough girl, Rach. Like, I'm going to give it to you straight, sister. It's like you're giving it to a straight because we're not looking you back in the eyes and you're going, you know, this is a real person in front of me. This is a real breathing human being that may or may not be able to do anything that they're saying that they want to. And we put so much pressure on ourselves to have these goals all the time. It's just, like, do we need to have, like, do I have to run a marathon to prove my worth? No. But that's where we're at. Oh, I gotta get a marathon to make sure, you know, I'm not left behind, that I don't feel like I'm a piece of shit. <sighs> children counting on you your family that you want to take care of counting on you you are counting on you maybe you know you're the 12 year old version of you who first dreamed up this dream and now you're 46 and it's still on your heart that 12 year old version of you is counting on you on the days that it gets hard on the days that it's not fun anymore on the days that you do not know what you're going to do best i want you to remember who is counting on you who is counting on you to keep going, to stand up, to try again, to look for another way, to call one more time, to reach out to another person, to, to read another book, to pray again, to meditate again, to take care of yourself so that you have the energy to try again tomorrow. Someone is counting on you. That's why you're not going to listen to the negative self-talk. That's why you're going to ignore your mother-in-law when she says something crappy about your dreams. That's why you're going to... She loves throwing Dave's mother-in-law under the bus, including her own family, but definitely the mother-in-law is always a thing. And I think that's like a relatable thing to most people. Like, oh, your mother-in-law, like your husband's mother never thinks you're good enough, you know, really deep down. Maybe that's not true for everybody, but I've experienced, not mother-in-law, I've never been married, but boyfriends whose moms were like mm, you do what oh mm, well my boy my son you know but she always likes to get that in there get that dig in there that's the most i like her is when she's actually like you know saying something like yeah my husband's mother was an asshole like i'm like okay i like that not this generic bullshit you you know you can it's just like even this freeze frame she looks empty to me 
like this is not serving her either. This is not her dream anymore. And I can feel it. She got, she has the delivery, but it's not to me, at least watching this, it's not satisfying because I don't believe it. Keep pursuing it. That's why you're going to wake up early if you have to. It's why you're going to stay up late. Not because you're trying to burn yourself out, but because you are so passionate about the dream that is in your heart that that is all the fuel you need to put in those extra hours. People are counting on you. Stay aligned with that truth. That's who you show up for when it gets hard. And that's why you're going to make this thing happen. So I gave you three truths. Here's the lie. Here's the lie that most dreamers believe that keeps them from pushing past the barriers, that keeps them stuck in that comfort zone. The lie is the idea that you need their support. I just need my partner to believe in this dream. I just need... I feel like this is taken directly from an MLM conference that she said or never got to do or something because it's it does make it sound like it's MLM to me. And that was like her bread and butter for, you know, those two years when she was doing doTERRA and whatever <clears throat> and Beachbody and all that. Because it does, it, all the truths in a lie, you know, like that's a very simple concept for a big, wide, vague audience of different, you know, middle age, oh, I'm not saying middle age, uh, young 20s to 50s, 60s women, white women predominantly in these MLMs for the most part. That would all kind of fit, all those things that she said would fit into that. And then, um, you know, people are depending on you to make this MLM work. People are depending on you to make this work. Your family, you know, your, your stay-at-home mom, they need the extra cash. Okay, and your husband doesn't have to support you, or your family can think it's, you know, kooky that you do this MLM, but they don't, you don't need their support. And, like, and your creator wouldn't have uh, given you the, you know, delivered that message from that hun that said, hey, honey, like, I have this great business. Like, that wouldn't have happened if like, you know, this wasn't meant for you. That's what I'm, that's the vibe I'm getting. Like MLM not never used content that she's like, okay, well I might as well just like try. I need my mama to believe in this dream. I just need the internet to believe, the venture capitalists to believe, the my family to believe. I need my friends to get it. Man, that'd be nice. You know how I got the support of my family and my friends and my husband at the time and my in-laws? You know how I got it? I made the dream come true. When you make the dream come true, everybody's a supporter. Oh my gosh. We are, we just, we always knew. We always knew you had it. We were, we, we knew. And I'm like, for me, I, pursued my dream but I did it like under cover of night so I got up at four o'clock five o'clock in the morning and I would write in the morning before the kids woke up we know and then the kids would wake up and I'd do breakfast and school drop-offs and then I'd go to my job and then I'd pick the kids up and it would all happen again I pursued my dream in the dark I pursued my dreams in a way that would be least hurtful to other people it's sort of like me saying like oh I I just dipped my pinky toe in the water but I'll tell you what, when it finally worked, everybody was a believer. And their memory of how supportive they were was like very different than my own. I was too immature at the time to understand that I could stick up for myself. I was too immature at the time to understand that my dreams had value because I have value as a human being. I was raised to believe that my husband's desires, needs, vision, dreams, all of that mattered more than me. So I believed in my heart that- But like, I guess my question is like, what else, What would she have done if she, like how would she have done things differently? Because she basically did everything she wanted to do. You know, the responsibility that she signed up for by getting married, having children, having a job, starting her own business, like those things, like what a, that was all Dave telling you that he, you had to do that or else or else or did she just make the mistake of getting married to Dave because she wanted the money and the security and she regrets that and now that she has money she's like oh well, I don't need him anymore that's a different story that's not as attractive 
obviously, because it shows, oh, a flaw in your character. I would disagree. I think it's more honest, but you know, you could say like, oh, wow, what a bitch. She, you know, thought that, you know, that was going to make her happy. And then in reality, you know, it didn't. She wanted to be a famous influencer more so than be a stay-at-home mom, you know? I think the fame is what she really wanted because she had all those. She was a writer when she sold five books. The dream is not to be a writer. She already did that. Her dream was accomplished when she became accomplished by validation from the public, by being impressed, by getting tickets sold. That was her dream, but she'll make it seem like, if you want to be a writer, this is the steps you have to take. It's like she already had that. What she wanted was the success, the look of success. But is that something to be chasing? That's the illness and the thing that's making everyone sick. It's chasing these followers that are meaningless. It's chasing these the clout. It's chasing the money. It's all these things that are like not really satisfactory, ultimately. But I think that's where she's still hung up on. She's like, oh, well, like my mother-in-law should have supported me in the beginning. It's like, yeah, but she didn't and you still succeeded. Okay, so that's good. What would you have done differently if she did support you? What? Like, what would you have done? Left your family earlier? Like, I don't understand what the, like what she would have actually changed if she could. I'm always confused by that the only way I could pursue something more for myself, something that was outside of what he thought was normal, was if I did it in a way that was least frustrating to him. And it's we, we talked about this years ago when we had a podcast that we did together. And we used to tell this story and we used to like laugh about it. And I look back in retrospect and I see it in such a different light that um, I would wake up, like I told you, four o'clock, five o'clock in the morning, I wake up to write. And when I would we wake up in the, the morning, time. I would unplug my phone, you know, on the side of the bed, the alarm would go off, I'd unplug my phone. And the sound of the cord hitting um, the the nightstand or, or falling on the floor, he'd get so pissed. He'd be like, ah, you woke me up. And he'd get so mad at the sound of the cord. And I learned to get out of bed like a ninja. Like I was so effing quiet and I would like tiptoe and like sneak out and quietly lay the cord down and do everything in my power to not disturb him. I'm talking about right now, it's like making the pressure in my chest rise. We talked about that a lot. We used to like laugh about it because he'd be like, oh yeah, you know, she wait, used to wake me up, waking up early in the morning. And in retrospect, I mean, it's taken me all this time to realize it wasn't about the cord. He didn't like that I was doing something he didn't understand. He didn't like that I was changing. He didn't like that I was motivated. He did not like that I was motivated. That was his thing. But I took it on as my own. And so I just kept being quieter and quieter and smaller and smaller so that I would not disturb him with my dreams and not disturbing. Okay. I was torn at this. I am torn at this still because, yeah, it's an asshole thing. Dave's an asshole. We get it. We know. I know. I we just watched him for 20 seconds, and I was like, okay, enough of that. But the thing is, you had another option back then too, Rachel. Like, you had the option to confront him about it and not go small because I guess it's like, so the alternative is she were to be like, fuck you. I'm going to write this book and become famous, or I'm going to write it at noon, not at 5 a.m. I'm going to do what I want to do. Would he have cut her off? Probably not, because she's the mother and the, you know, the person taking care of their children. But it's almost like it's his fault that he didn't support me more back then. Like, you know, but it's also like, well, you chose him to be your husband as well. So Yes, he should have been more supportive, but there's there's options other than sucking it up that were there. Leaving him was an option. And so as I feel bad for for her, I think, yeah, like, you know, him doing that and being annoyed that she had she had other inspiration or aspirations was sort of frustrating. I don't know. I, I don't really have the same sympathy I wish I did for her. Because I'm like, yeah, but, you know, you kind of have to find the balance of like, he, this dude is paying for me to be able to have this opportunity, to be able to afford a nanny so that I can run this blog and take the kids to, you know, 
soccer practice and they, the nanny can help me, you know, during these times or whatever, like there is benefit and give and take that you have to have in a marriage. Like if Dave was just like, honey, whatever you want to do, you know, punch me in the face. If you, if that may, helps you get your anger out to get this book out, like that would be, I think too much. I think you need to like have balance. Like if, yeah, if you, if you want to be a mom and want to do this thing, all these things, and all, like everything, like <laughs> someone brought up in the comments, I said like, yeah, what happened to like Beyonce and you have the same 24 hours in a day? I agree. Like you have the same 24 hours. No, I don't agree with that. But like, if you were to think of that in that context, it's like, so Rachel, everyone's got the same support. It depends on what you do with it. That matters. It's like, that's not true. Number one. And number two, it's like, I don't know. I, I, again, I'm, I'm sort of going off topic, but I'm just, I don't know if I feel that bad because she still did everything she wanted to do. And he was a big part of that. So it's like, I don't think. <laughs> Daryl. <laughs> Daryl, stop. <laughs> stop. <laughs> She's pushing the buttons on the, <laughs> on the sound machine. Come here. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. I was going off topic. Again. That was a good save, Kitty. Thank you. All right, back to Rachel. Being someone with your dreams is essentially saying, I don't want to disturb you with who I am at my core. I didn't get that. And I tell you these stories now because I want you to skip the decade that it took me to learn this. Man, what if you could just not waste 10 more years barely pursuing this dream? What if you understood that you had a right to your dreams and you have a right to pursue them? You only need one person to believe in your dreams. You. That's it. You don't have to argue about it. You don't have to defend it. You just have to live it. And when you live it, you show other people what it's going to be. Don't you get? They can't see it. You're trying to convince people who don't have your vision what it looks like. You're wasting energy. Put that energy, put that heart, put that passion into the project. Fall in love with the thing you're trying to do. Fall in love with it. Be obsessed, be obsessively in love with this thing that you're trying to do. You don't need anybody else. You just need what's right here inside of you. <laughs> they cut off the hard sell for the the conference. Interesting. Ugh. Um. Yeah, I don't know the whole Dave thing. Like, I don't know. I feel like, again, just to summarize what I was trying to say is, I do have sympathy for her. But then again, you know, it's she tries to make it seem like he was really the hindrance that prevented her from not succeeding faster or something or him not supporting her. She, she got the, the bracelet, and I saw someone else talk, talk about that in the comments too. She got the 3% bracelet that she found inspirational. That, and, and the same thing I said about the marathon, like she would, you know, she didn't care to run a marathon until he did. So there's something inside of her, probably unhealthy, I would guess, that is driven by competition, that is driven by being told, no, you can't do that. His mother-in-law probably fueled her to get more work done than any motivational podcast ever could. And it's important to realize that about yourself, you know, but I don't, again, I think like admitting that, cause I have that in me for sure. If someone's like, oh, you suck. I'm like, okay, well now I'm going to do it, you know? And that's not necessarily good. That's, that's more motivating to me though. than someone telling me like, oh, you're so good at what you do. Keep doing it. I'm like, Psh, meh. <laughs> meh, whatever, you know? And that's probably because my mom, who I cared about more than anything in this world, never was satisfied. So, you know, my idea of like love, getting love, getting that ultimate love, which is my mom's, was being told no 70,000 times as a kid and feeling like the next time I'm gonna do it, the next time I'm gonna prove to her that I am worthy and I'm cool and I'm good and I'm a, you know, whatever, whatever the thing was, I'm talented and it's never coming. And same with Dave, like, oh, she proved Dave wrong. She proved Dave's mother-in-law wrong. And look what, how it turned out. She can't stand him. 
anyways. And the whole career is over anyways, too. It's a struggle. So she proved him wrong. And now what? Now she's got to prove the new boyfriend wrong, that she can also do a tour. It's exhausting. I feel for her in that way. It sucks to be tormented with all this shit. And, you know, I don't want anyone to experience it, honestly. Really, it all sucks. But I'm also not claiming to be a motivational speaker, pay me $5,000 and I'll fix your illnesses, your mental distresses. So I think that's the difference. And I'm allowed to say what I want to say. <laughs> Anyways, okay. That is, uh, that is three and a half hours. Uh, I have consumed this much water. So it's pee pee time. It's pee pee time, right, Dave? Not your poop again. I said pee pee time, Dave. Come on. I will slowly buy you a boat. Oh, well, thank you. I love you. Thanks, Dave. Um, okay, so <clears throat> we didn't get to the Jay Shetty stuff. That's okay. But my here's my plan for the future. Let me know if you like this idea. Uh, I want to start going live more regularly, probably more on a Tuesday night, I'm thinking. Uh, but maybe Monday, but probably Tuesday night. We'll find a we'll find the night. And opening it up to more topics. So more gurus, more analysis, more stuff. Always sort of circling back to the Hollises in some way or checking on them, keeping them definitely in the conversation updates and whatever, because I'm obsessed. Um, but uh, opening it up, because I feel like I don't want to, and I've said this many, many times, but I don't want to only cover them. I want to open it to others. And even if some people aren't interested in that, that's okay. But I want to sort of get used to like talking about other people um, in this format. And, uh, and I think I'm trying to bring in some graphics and things that people can use and interact with during the shows that I think will add some excitement to that and some uh, like inside jokes and things. Because I feel like there are so many inside jokes that <laughs> we can use um, to have even more fun together uh so yeah so don't forget i am caring about you and i am the person that will hold all of your emotional baggage for you so you will always succeed in everything you want to do and you have never done anything wrong in your life and anyone who's ever been mean to you they're wrong i know this about you and you've had a hard day in the last 10 years right i knew it so you'll be all right if you just buy my membership when it comes out at some point. Um, yeah. Oh, here's another, here's my final new uh, soundbite. What up, homie? Speaking of Lisa Bilyeu. Oh no, the sex spots are back. Oh gosh. Um, okay. So if you have any topic suggestions uh, for content, um, the best thing to do is DM me on Instagram. Actually, the best thing to do is join Patreon. <laughs> Because uh, that's where, like, the core group lives. Um, the link is in the description below. No pressure at all. I also respond to DMs on Instagram. That's a good way to do it. Um, or just in comments during the actual shows. So, because I feel like there's, there should be a way. I'm trying to figure out the tech side of all this. And there's, there is a way on Twitch, I know, that you can send in links to watch. And I think that would be awesome to have some links sent in by viewers and kind of set it up like that for like, you know, just like, it doesn't have to be a whole person investigation, but just like, like a weird keynote or a interview podcast, something. And we'll just go from there and keep them loosey goosey. Cause I really do like lives. I love making content like the deep dives and stuff, but it takes so long and I get so frustrated and I have to like reshoot and research and I like just talking, even if it doesn't make sense half the time. I just, it feels good to get it off my chest, to be quite honest. So, you know, if it lands, it lands. If it doesn't, deuces, I'm out. I got to go home and God, I'm already home. I'm at my home. I get to go home from Rage Talk and, uh, you know, be done. <laughs> and I like seeing the comments come in. So, okay, I'm seeing Wayne Dyer. Hell yeah. Giolito Coat. Yes, yes. Lightyear movie review. <laughs> Is it about motivational speakers okay dave ramsey dave so on patreon 
every week or uh, not every week. I lied. Uh, every time I finish a deep dive video, then the patrons vote on the next person to be covered. So the next person is going to be Dave Ramsey. So that is what I'm working on in the shadows. Now that'll be separate from the lives, but yeah, Dave Ramsey is, is on my next to cover list. So I'm interested because I don't, I know about him. I don't know as much about him as like the other people. So it'll be a good, fresh perspective, deep dive on Dave Ramsey. Uh, ooh, yeah. Yeah, this is the type of stuff I need. These are the type of links that you should save and send to me and I'll put them on a list and we'll go through them and we'll just react. Okay, so yes. Sorry, sex bots. You guys are shut down for the night because we're leaving. And on Thursday, if you have free time, at noon, Eastern Standard, Eastern Standard Time, or if you want to watch the replay, uh, Cringe Fluencers, if you search it on YouTube, Camelia, Kazan, and I, we do, uh, we'd watch Influencers and talk about it together. So that's another option, and that's every Thursday at noon, Eastern Standard. Okay, everybody, peace out. It was fun. True sadness. See you soon. Toodaloo. Goodbye. Get a life.